Hello, Internet. Welcome to Shenanigans, that crazy fantasy series where you control the chaos. Oh, I am Angela, one of, uh, one of, one of, your DM du jour, uh, and uh, this is season three of Shenanigans. Yay! Yay! Everyone say yay! <laughs> I hope you are doing wonderful, because holy, holy crow, oh starting the hype train subscribe. is quite the uh, the welcome. So thank you all so much. Um, I see we have a bunch of rating and stuff. Um, I'm just not going to look at chat. I want other people to worry about that, because I need to go through a whole spiel today. Um, so uh, today marks the premiere of our third season, our third campaign here in the world of Vale, uh, our homebrew or our homebrew world. Um, as we continue with uh, playing with a bunch of uh, friends and then back off. So a uh, couple of things to note. As I said, uh, I'm Angela. I'm your DM, uh, and oh, we have hi. our wonderful, We've wonderful players here. Uh, and we quiet. will go. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'll talk louder then. Is that better? Maybe. No? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to go through a little spiel because we have a lot of things to talk about. Lots of things have, have happened since you last saw us and uh, and and we're, we're excited to talk about the stream and, and some of the amazing people that are helping us put this whole thing together. Uh, so, as always, we are members of the Nerdsmith Network. We're a community of entertainers and content creators that like to make free content for you to enjoy. Uh, you can find out more about us at nerdsmith.org. Um, and in the event that you like what you watch tonight, or you just find us charming, uh, you could consider sponsoring or uh, becoming one of our patrons at patreon.com slash nerdsmith. Uh, we have lots of bonus content that we put out, uh, extra podcasts, and uh, flights of fancy that we, we sort of come up with. And so you can get a lot of cool stuff there by virtue of being one of the people that can help us keep the lights on here at the network uh, and help keep shows like this going and renewing and and doing all sorts of fun stuff so yeah please check us out uh we are playing dungeons and dragons as if you have come here before you uh you would know that uh but if you're new here hi we're gonna play DD. um one of the things though we considered when we decided to run DD for this season is that we wanted to take the opportunity to use the platform that we get by virtue of being in the Dungeons and Dragons space here on Twitch and likely be seen by more people, we wanna take the opportunity to highlight indie games and other tabletop role-playing games that you might not know about that if you like us, you might enjoy them. We want you to take a look and just remember that there are plenty of other games at the table besides the ones that just have the lion's share. So we want you to, you know, sample a little bit, try out some other stuff. And I thought that our first highlighted game was very appropriate because I think it's the one that brought some of us together. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Camp Flying Moose for Girls of All Kinds by Alicia Furness. Uh, Camp Flying Moose is a really amazing Power by the Apocalypse game that takes place during a um, uh, in a summer camp. For, for girls of all kinds, and it is very fun if you enjoy things like Gravity Falls, the cartoon, or Hilda on Netflix, uh, you like um, Scooby-Doo, things like that, mysteries and sort of childhood whimsy, you will really, really enjoy Camp Flying Moose. I cannot recommend it enough. I put the link in chat to Alicia's itch.io account, and you can find uh, Camp Flying Moose there, as well as printed copies, because Alicia did just come out with that with a whole new layout and some beautiful art. So please consider checking out Camp Flying Moose for girls of all kinds. Uh, and uh, and I, yeah, I just can't, I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, that's how me and Tessa and Chris all got to play for the first time together. And we had an absolute blast and I'm so excited <laughs> to have us all together again. Um, also, in addition to us wanting to signal boost other people that um, are in our sphere, we wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsors that have allowed this show to exist, uh, including our newest sponsor, Eldritch Foundry. Eldritch Foundry is a character creation uh, miniature company. You can find them in, uh, I'm going to put the link 
in the chat because I totally forgot to make a code, but we're gonna do that. Uh, so you can check them out there. Uh, all of our character art is designed in Eldritch Foundry's uh, engine. You can also get tokens made from your characters, whether that is a, a profile token or a top-down if you want to use it for map stuff. So it's super cool. And you should check out Eldritch Foundry uh, today. Please take a look, and we will hopefully have some cool things to share with you from them in the future, in the very near future. Um, we are also... Lo lovingly sponsored by Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice is an amazing company that makes polymer and metal dice sets. Uh, you can find amazing designs from them and accessories, including the Scroll of Rolling, which is a very cool little uh, container to hold two seven-piece sets of dice, I believe. Well, there's a seven-piece, and then there's a double one you can get, uh, and it also rolls out into a dice tray. It is super duper cool. Um, please check them out at dieharddice.com. Uh, we have uh, a link here, I believe. No, not yet. It's fine. Uh, go to dieharddice.com and please check them out. They have beautiful, beautiful sets. And as part of tonight's uh, festivities, we will probably do it a little later because I need to go track down our codes, but we will be taking, we will be putting out some codes tonight. Uh, for a $50 gift card to use at Die Hard Dice. I have which, the codes. I mean, no worries. I have the codes. I've got the codes. $50 will get you a metal set. It'll make your table feel bad about itself. You it will. Really it will. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, Die Hard Dice is incredible. They are an amazing group of people. Uh, anyone who's ever uh, ordered from them, we have only ever heard really great things. So please take a look at all of their absolutely flippin' gorgeous sets. They did just come out with a cool set that has um, uh, this dragon themed. It's got scales on it. It's, oh, I, I can't stop thinking out about it. Um, and finally, World Anvil is our their family. Worldanvil.com is an absolutely incredible community of world builders who are um, just the most imaginative folks I have ever met. It is a site it is a is a campaign management and world building software if you are a gm or an author or uh just really like making repositories of knowledge for the fictions that you like making up uh world anvil is an incredible resource for that you can use it you can use a lot of their features for free starting out but if you join as one of their guild members, you can get some amazing customization features, including custom URLs and some very, very cool things that will just really immerse your readers or your players in your worlds that you're trying to build. So please, please check out worldanvil.com and light up the forge. We have a bunch of forge and smithy theme things, and I'm very proud of like the bizarre uh, like synergy that happened. <laughs> over the course of our the companies that we've been involved with um so that's my whole spiel that i have that's crazy all right let's meet our players because we haven't gotten a chance to yet let's go around the horn um we're gonna start with eating medium i mean we'll just go in order tessa how about you introduce yourself hi <laughs> find people out hi. there i'm tessa i you can find me on twitter at Selky Dreams. I am the uh, administrative director here at Nerdsmith, and um, very, very excited to be starting season three. And um, feeling a bit like the scarecrow at the moment, but uh, you know, I'll get into it. I'll get into it. So, but, but very excited. It's scarecrow, but make it fashion. Scarecrow, but fashion. I think I've got it. I think yeah, I can do that. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, Kyle. Hi, I'm Kyle. Um, I am the <clears throat> excuse me, uh, practicing the, uh, the the youngster voice tonight. Um, uh, I am the director of advertising at Nerdsmith, and you can find me on our Nerdsmith server. Usually, just posting in culinary wonders all the time, all the time. I'm sorry, everyone, that I spam all my stuff in that channel. That's just that's just me. I cook a lot, so I'm okay with it, Kyle. Okay, okay, good. Um, I like cooking. Thank you, Kyle. Chris, would you like to go next? Chris, you're next. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Uh, hello, my name is Chris. This is my first season. Hopefully, first of many. 
with shenanigans. Um, so, so excited to stretch my legs a little bit with this, with this character. Um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Kiss of Hemlock. I stream on a bunch of different channels because I don't want to run my own. I rely on my friends to do that. So uh, that's the best way to keep up with me, honestly. Awesome, awesome. And Heather, would you like to introduce yourself to the fine folks? I guess I can. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Heather. I'm the uh, Director of Operations here at Nerdsmith. Uh, I've been a little quieter on the server lately, but when I am there, I'm usually posting pictures of cute dogs and cats since I work at a vet hospital. And I'm kind of Nerdsmith's resident crazy cat lady. Um, not always including the crazy part, though. It depends on the day. Beautiful. Thank you all so much. So, we are... I don't have anything more to fill in. I don't, I don't have any more... Oh, God. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. Um, so, um, with all of that out of the way, um, I would like to once again thank you all for joining us and welcome to Shenanigans, the Book of Fables, which we're going to begin. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Hold on. I had a thing. I had a thing. I had a thing. I had a thing. I knew I had a thing. There, there we go. I had a color choice. It was a color palette. All right. Loras, Laura Dumpus. It won't be too much. Okay. Welcome to the City Cell Chronogram 4 Reacclamation Center. My name is Janet, and it's very wonderful to meet all of you. One of the seven focal points on the prime material colony created by the celestial nirvana of Mechanus. We are here to keep the chaos underground and under control. Otherwise, it will take over us all. You are all here today for some very momentary lapses in judgment and we would like to go around the room please and talk about how we can better ourselves and do and and become more productive members of society in the future you are all in a room right now uh with tables uh completely blank uh metal tables they have very little but angles um you are sitting in very uncomfortable chairs and you are all staring at each other in a big circle. Janet is an elven woman uh, with light green skin, uh, very long pointed ears, and uh, just like the faintest green, but mostly white hair in a, in a very um, official looking bun on the top of her head. Uh, and she is sort of just looking past all of you, like at a point just above your head as she is giving this little speech to you. And she goes on and on about the history of, you you know, most of this and the rest of it, you don't really care. Uh, the history of Mechanus and how the or how the elemental plane of order sent scouts out to the worlds um, of the prime material to um, to seek out ways it could better the chaos brewing in the worlds um, and how it found a tiny little island on the world of Vale and it saw this tiny little island and the energy power some sort of force bubbling up from underneath the surface and determined, oh crap. And after it determined, oh crap, it determined, oh, they can't handle this. And so the world, <laughs> the city of Mechanus sent a colony to take the island and help its residents, its poor, poor, uh, unorganized mortal residents and put it in such a way that allows for the chaos brewing beneath the world to stay stoppered. Now, each of the city cells, each of the chronograms are uh, very regimented, very block style cities. Most of you are familiar with life in a chronogram. Uh, everything runs by schedules. Um, everything runs uh, to the minute, to the second even, if you're very talented. But all of you are here at the Reacclimation Center because for whatever reason, you had some trouble 
sticking to the schedule, let's say. Um, those who have trouble uh, staying in line or or abiding by the uh, the assigned responsibilities given to them by the great schedule sometimes end up here at the reclamation centers. You didn't see this building. You only saw the train, the underground train that connects all of the chronograms, the, uh, the trains run by the metronomes. And when you arrived here at the reclamation center, you were very swiftly given a uh, jumpsuit that is a very dull gray. Um, you were given a, uh, a hat of which you have the option to wear also in a very dull gray and, uh, were placed in this room in a little pod of five, Janet and the five of you sitting here. Uh, you're all relatively young. Uh, most of the ones who show up at the reacclimation center tend to be, uh, haven't quite gotten the hang of what they're supposed to be doing and how they're supposed to be following the rules. So as Janet continues on this very elaborate, very long speech about the creation of the chronograms and how Mechanist will save us all and how we all have a part to play as a cog in the great celestial machine, she walks over to each of you. And what she says with a very, very broad, almost artificial smile, uh, she walks up to, we're going to say she walks up to Paru. Now, Paru, Janet says to you, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? What is your name and what was your infraction? Um, hi, my name is Paru and uh, I, uh, well, you see, my my parents are um, mushroom farmers, and uh, I mean, m mushrooms are friends. So I took all of the mushrooms that they harvested for oh the week, my, and got a new I replanted them back in the ground where they belong because nobody should be eating the mushroom friend. And how will you spend their, your time here in the reacclimation center to correct this behavior and do better in the future? I will not play with my mushrooms. Janet sort of takes a moment to take that in, looks at her clipboard. We'll work on that. And she starts making notes. Um, Tess, would you like to describe Paru for everyone? I should have done that first. Sure. Um, Paru, Paru seems to be a young goblin looking girl. Um, while she is, um, sitting there, she has decked out her gray hat in as many leaves as she possibly could. Um, she has maybe a few surreptitious mushrooms tucked into the hat band, she, and occasionally she pulls one or two out and makes them have conversations with one another while they, she, Janet's attention is elsewhere. Um, and then quickly secrets them away back underneath her hat. Um, mm -hmm. she is barely two feet tall, um, on the chubby side and, uh, is a just mess of green and brown freckles, um, and dirt and a little bit of mushroom matter, kind of like this sticky purpley red mushroom color, uh, matter kind of like smeared across her cheek like it blush um mm -hmm. and that is that is paru uh janet eyes the leaves on your hat and in sort of a really fighting to not comment just makes another note on the clipboard and uh, turns on her heel uh and approaches um oliette uh, Chris, would you like to describe who Janet is approaching right now? Absolutely. Um, so, Aliette is a tiefling, um, currently somewhat short in stature, uh, a little bit anxious looking. She has, uh, electric blue hair, 
and a very, very dark midnight blue, almost black tinted skin. Um, currently dressed in uh, her garb and trying to look as small as possible. Um, I have like little like rectangular glasses. And yeah, I think that's, oh, I forgot. I have little bat wings that I keep that's behind me as my, like keep them as tight as possible so that they don't draw attention. Okay. Uh, Janet comes up and says, will you please introduce yourself to the group? What is your name and what was your infraction? Thank you. Um, is Aliette? I don't. I'm I'm supposed. Well, one of the reasons that we're all here is to better understand ourselves, and one of those things might be to better understand what our fractions were. We'll have to do a very thorough inventory of your behaviors from the last several months in order to pinpoint the exact reason that you've been sent here to the reacclimation center. It will be quite thorough. I guess. Okay. Uh, very good. And she, <laughs> uh, she fills out the clipboard. Chris, would you do me a uh, favor, my friend? I apologize for interrupting, but could you boost your mic levels just a little bit? You are maxed for me, and unfortunately, I can't turn you up any higher. So I apologize, guys, for the interruption. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, you can work on that, and I will move to the next person. Uh, Janet wanders up to uh, another very, um, very small uh, figure in the group. Uh, uh, Heather, will you describe your, uh, will you describe Beza for us, please? Okay. Uh, so Beza is uh, very, very, very pale, almost as white as marble, you would say, in fact, or alabaster. Um, she is rather short. She's about three feet tall, maybe three foot one inch. Um, and is a strange combination of gears and metal, as well as large chunks of some kind of white material. And um, she has sort of the facial features of a gnome, as if whoever carved her might have designed her to look a little bit like one. And she's probably wearing very minimal clothing, like potato sack kind of thing. Like, something was just thrown at her quickly because she didn't know what she was supposed to wear. As Janet walks towards you, she makes a note of, uh, of your form uh, and uh, checks something off of her clipboard and says, Hello, please introduce yourself to everyone. What is your name and what was your infraction? Hi. All right. Well, my name's Beza. I, I don't actually know exactly the infraction was my fault. I, I was kind of just born. Um, my, my, my father, my creator, whatever you want to call him, he was trying to make an automaton and he got me. Oh my, that's, that is quite, that is quite an anomaly. We don't, those don't do. Um, well... We'll figure something out. And she just turns with that smile plastered on her face. But her eyes are a little wild and, and panicked. Um, finally, she turns to... Uh, she she looks um, up from her clipboard, um, kind of glancing at the same eye level she'd been looking for everyone else, and realizes she has to go up quite a ways. Um, Kyle, would you like to describe uh, who she is approaching? Yeah, the, uh, the the small sprout uh, that is like four and a half feet tall is uh, he's a furbolg. Uh, he's kind of uh, pale complected for a furbolg. Um, got a, a mop of hair and kind of just just kind of like hunched over, slouched, and just you know seems to have a really easy going look on his face. Like he's just taking everything in stride. What about you? What is your name and what was your infraction? Oh, hello, ma'am. My my name is is Harlan. It's H A R E L E. A. And. Mm. Yeah. Uh. And uh. I was I was sent here because 
uh, there was there was like a shipment of taters that was coming down from the farm, and then the taters spilled all over the road, uh, and I just happened to be there. And then there was a shipment of corn that all just popped walking by the house and uh, then there was there was a bunch of radishes and the, the radishes turned like all sorts of funky colors and uh, you know th there's uh, you know, there's like uh, beets there's beets that uh, bl bleached everything a different color of what they're supposed to be and uh, there's uh, um, leeks uh, they caused them You got me. <laughs> uh, Janet, Janet just was making notes and then just sort of trailed off as you continued to list things. And she kind of shakes back. Oh, right. Um, and we did have some quotes and, um, and, and eyewitness testimonies from some of your many infractions, including, quote, uh, my radishes, end quote. Oh, we'll yeah. work on that, too. Um, but you're very welcome here, and, and regardless of the number of infractions, if it is the first time you've been retrieved for the Acclamation Center, we are all on equal footing. Thank you, Welcome. You're welcome. Uh, and then she turns to the, uh, the fifth figure in the group, um, a masculine presenting uh, dwarven uh, person, a uh, young uh, shock of blue hair, on on their head a uh, bit of like really shaggy sideburns and they've got their feet kicked up on the table and they're just kind of like picking at their nails with their teeth and uh janet walks up to this uh individual and says uh hello what is your name and what is your infraction and uh the dwarven uh the dwarven uh youngin teen kind of looks up get bent just kind of like him and Janet's just like I am unable to do that um but if you would give me your name and your infraction we could continue with the meeting with very little unpleasantness what and uh what, what does get bed mean I don't understand it the uh the dwarven uh the dwarven um uh youngin uh they <sighs> kind of sigh put their hands up on the back of their head and pull back and as they lean down everything of their visage shifts and they go from this dwarven blue haired kind of greaser look uh to a um to a tiefling with like spikes going on the back uh sort of uh femme presenting at this point and uh almost um almost like a sunset gradient going on in their skin uh and uh readjusts their boots kind of crosses their feet again stares up at janet you know this whole place is such a joke <laughs> this is my third time here and you guys still haven't figured out how to fix me so <laughs> and janet keeps smiling doesn't quite know what to do um and uh, there's a there's a bit of a stare down happening right now. That's that's uh, really cool. Can you do a mushroom? Uh, no. But well, thanks for playing. Um. Uh, and Janice like, now I'll try once again. Third time's the charm. What is your name and what is your infraction? You can see there's like a little crack in her calm. And the uh, the person uh, at the table looks up, glances up and down at Janet, and with a very uh, performative inhale and exhale, uh, you see their skin and their clothing shift again, and Janet is sitting at the table. <laughs> and... Uh, Faux Janet uh, looks up with a big plastered grin and says, well, my name's Janet and my infraction is having a giant stick up my ass. Which one of y'all say that? I'm saying double. I don't. Mm, yeah, it's not just you. 
I okay, that's going to be helpful. <laughs> Janet loses the smile. Real Janet. Janet Prime loses the smile. <laughs> um, looks down at her tablet, or her clipboard, and uh, turns it around at the second Janet to show them the, uh, the paper that's written there. And Janet Prime says, I believe your name is Villain and your infraction has been repeatedly impersonating other people for illegal purposes. And the uh, person at the table sighs, rolls their eyes, very no longer having fun if she's just gonna tell everybody what's going on, and just kind of reclines again and the visage shifts again and you see in front of you a masculine presenting very thin broad-shouldered individual with um dark clothes uh their skin is almost like a um sort of like a, a very lightly lavendered gray uh their eyes are dark almost black entirely and it's a big shock of spiky messy white hair on the back uh, on the top of their head and they just kind of grumbled like, yeah okay whatever and just sort of grumbles down into their seat and janet very well then everyone's accounted for and now we will begin the uh the debriefing now for the next hour janet talks at you <laughs> there's apparently a longer version of that speech she gave um talking about the importance of order and the uh, the viability of every member of society being only as good as their willingness to follow the plan and uh, how infractions uh, really just put uh, grit into the finely tuned cogs of the machine that is the chronogram. Yes, Beza, what can I do for you? Um, Miss Janet, how do you follow the plan if, if creation wasn't part of it? There's like a solid 15 seconds <laughs> of blank smile. I will refer that to the higher-ups and I will get back to you. Please, for now, just take notes and do the best you can. And she turns back to, uh, <laughs> to her lesson. All right. <laughs> During the entirety of this speech, Aliette <clears throat> is taking notes but sneaking glances at Elaine. This, this is very interesting to her. Okay. Hold on. Are you trying to do this stealthily or are you not trying to yes. try to sneak? Yeah, it? absolutely. Okay. I don't I don't uh, want them to see that. <laughs> give me a stealth check. First okay. roll of the game. Oh man. Uh that's an eleven. <laughs> um, so uh Valaine has uh found a it looked kind of like a lockpick in their pocket, but they just started picking their teeth again with it. <laughs> <laughs> they really got something like maybe they were eating popcorn before it's really hard to tell what's going on they might just be doing it to be obnoxious um but villain catches you once like sort of not trying to look and uh and they just kind of like quirk an eyebrow and just uh sort of oh. salute with the toothpick that they're <laughs> working with <laughs> uh so, you spend this hour uh, taking notes or not taking notes during <laughs> your debrief, um, in which you are given the uh, the imp uh, the impression that here at the acclamation center, you're going to be expected to 
do a couple of things. Uh, one, there's an element of community service having to do here at the reclamation area. You will be given some assignments and it's basically like practice for being out in the workforce after you get released. Um, this is non-voluntary. Um, you have to be here. Um, otherwise you risk being exported out of, uh, out of the colonies and, uh, who knows where you'd end up, you know, your homes are here. So none of you, I assume really want to not be here. Um, so you, you sit here, um, understanding that you're going to have to do a little bit of community service and you're going to have to do some sort of like book report like, you wasn't really sure what you were going to have to do with it, but it, it had to do with researching some facet of the great machine that is the chronogram, specifically your uh, city cell, which is chronogram four, uh, four of seven, and, uh, and, and do a report on how how the people in those uh, in those industries or in that facet of society helps the group by staying uh, staying the course and and doing what is prescribed for that um, uh, for that facet. And so yeah, you're, you, the book report is going to be fairly lengthy. Uh, she does go through the outline and Olia gets excited every time uh, it, um, bibliographies are mentioned or <laughs> or what sort of like I'm sure some questions get put back and forth of like what sort of formatting do you need our footnotes to be in um, and you get into a very elaborate conversation with Janet um, about those sort of details about the book report uh, though eventually you do manage to exhaust her ability to answer those questions and just is like it's several weeks until you actually have to uh, begin this book report so you can ask questions at that time um you get I the just, impression that I want to be prepared. I, I don't want to, I, you know, I, this is very important to me and I want to do a good job. Very good. Enthusiasm is one tenth of the effort it takes to finish this, this course. Uh, so, so, um, you all are, uh, given this debrief and this, uh, this overview of what your classes, uh, your time here at the reclamation center or reacclim reclamation reacclimation center is going to be and um you are released for uh what would they call it um it was a, at one point it felt like it was lunch you were getting released for um but it seems like it's your allotted half hour of physical activity for the day um it includes lunch so efficiency is very important um your Janet uh, leads you all out of the room. Uh, Villain is last, just kind of sulking in the back. Um, and uh, somehow found bubblegum. Don't know where it came from. Uh, and you all start uh, being led by Janet down the hall. Uh, the reacclimation center is just right angles and concrete and bronze. <laughs> And, uh, it's, it's, every hallway looks exactly the same. Um, the signage appears to be in a language I don't believe any of you speak. Um, and it mostly just looks like math, um, which is very disconcerting why anyone would write math on a wall that, you know, wasn't a chalkboard. Um, and, and yeah, so she takes you down several hallways and after a moment or two, um, you are sent to a little courtyard that has a, uh, sort of a cafeteria window and a couple of benches and, um, some very like modern looking, what you have to assume is like exercise stuff, like a place to do pull-ups and maybe like just a bench made of stone that you're supposed to just like use your own body weight to, uh, to do your exercises. Um, so yeah, you have been left here. Jana goes, it's been an experience. And she turns around without saying anything else and leaves you all in the courtyard. So she was nice. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's one word for it. What do you think she meant by an experience? Do you think we're already failing? Hmm. Usually, failure requires trying. Well, 
shoot, then if we never try, we we'll never fail, right? Exactly! See? That is exactly how we, we do it. And then if you don't try, like, you don't harvest the mushrooms because you don't try to harvest the mushrooms, then you don't fail at harvesting mushrooms because you never did it in the first place. I don't know if that's actually how things work here, though, because, like, I didn't try to be born. I was supposed to be activated, and instead, here I am. I think I might be in the wrong class. Why do you, What's why a do you book report? I mean, I... Well, I'm... I just, I don't, I don't understand what you mean by don't try. This should be easy if we study hard and do exactly what we're supposed to. It should be fine. I hope we don't have any group projects. That's all I'm saying. I assume you're the one who usually does all the work in those. Belaine sort of chimed in from behind. Has already taken a seat yeah. on the ground against a tree. <laughs> Somehow has found a flask. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind trying. I just, you know, um, can any of you teach me how to read? No. Yes. It, it wasn't part of my, uh, you know, the plan for my creation, so he didn't really put that in the magic, I guess. I mean, it's super easy. I don't mind teaching you. But what do you mean following you on this whole creator thing? Well, I don't have all the pieces of the information. My understanding is that my creator was trying to make an automaton bodyguard, and she kind of like flips her wrist in a weird direction and suddenly there's a scimitar where her hand was holy shit <coughs> um she flips it back in but he i guess he used some material he shouldn't uh and she kind of taps the white stone of her face and um so i ended up with this whole situation where i'm supposed to be a mindless automaton that takes orders and instead he got me I was Someone's in on the I guess. I mean, he didn't seem too upset, but then his ex-wife called the authorities, and now I'm here. Um, and uh, someone called me a Goa, but I don't know exactly what that is. Okay. That's all I got. Well, that, and that apparently... The reason I sound like this is because of the ex-wife. I see you like, like mother, nice like daughter. Well, so, yeah. Apparently, he made a few mistakes, including sending his ex-wife to commission the voice box. I don't understand what you think is wrong with your voice. It's perfectly functional. I can understand exactly what you're saying. Also, yeah. how do you do that? How do I do what? With the big knife. How'd you do that? Oh, um, it's a combination of, um, she flips it back out again. Some, some gears right here in my elbow, and then, um, the wrist bends back and becomes like the hilt. And, um, the cross god, whatever that thing's called. And, uh, yeah. And then it folds back in. Does it hurt? It's like my daddy's boot. Your daddy's I don't know boot exactly. folds back in and out? No, he, he, he's got a knife in it. Oh. That would be uncomfortable to walk on. It doesn't hurt. It's some kind of combination of magic and gears and stuff. I don't know. You'd have to ask my father, a creator. I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to call him. Hmm. You all hear a very tiny, like... And you, and if any of you look, Villain has a butterfly knife. And it's like trying to do the thing that Beza just did, like trying to get the movement down. But you don't know where he got the, where they got the knife. <laughs> the flask is gone. That's pretty good. Can you do it with both? And she flipped. And she flipped uh, I, I I only got the one in. Sorry. 
That's fine. I was supposed to be some sort of bodyguard, so, you know, he, he made sure I could fight with both hands. The, the, yeah, the, the re, what is it? Reacclimation center people didn't like that very much. <laughs> so, what kind of book do we have to look at? I don't, I mean, I don't know a lot about books. So, I, and, hmm. Uh, you hear uh, to do. You have 20 minutes until the end of your scheduled physical activity session. Shoot, should we start like moving or something? Like I I don't want I don't want to not not be physically active if that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I'm hungry. Villain gets up and starts wandering towards the window where there was like food being given out. Paro. Some people are doing little loops around the tables. Paro wanders up to Harland because he's so much taller than she is. Um, would you mind if I um did a little physical activity and just used you kind of as like um. Like a climbing jungle gym? I think that would be more fun than walking in circles. Oh, well, well, sure. I mean, it, this thing don't got any pockets on it, so I don't know what kind of handholds you, you could get, but sure. Okay. I mean, she, I, she I does not require handholds. She just kind of like scrambles up him <laughs> and like sits on his shoulder, like, hmm, this is a nice view from up here. I don't know. I see it every day. Uh, give me a give me a um a, a deck save, um, Paru, as Harlan turns with his gigantic ears. Oh God! <laughs> you. Uh, let's find out. Hang on. Yes, I did. Just climb him like a tree, literally. <laughs> Platonically. I, I platonically climbed him like a tree, and my deck save is an 18. Okay, so you see a big old verbal gear turn as he, like, turns to talk to you, and you're just like... Very, uh, very adept at avoiding... What I have to imagine feels like a lamb's ear. Um, That's just my head. <laughs> you all go get food like we did? Yeah, that's probably good. I could stand the heat. I'm a, I'm a bit peckish. Okay. Well, I'll get down so you can eat, and I'll get in line. Um, I mean, you could, you could stay there if you wanted to. You're not bothering nobody. I, I don't eat, but you guys could share my portion if you want to. I will stay here. Thank you. This is perfect. <laughs> hey, pretty blue hair lady, you want to come and get some food, too? So, uh, Valene has begrudgingly gotten in the back of the line. Uh, tried to kind of scoot forward, but no one was having that. <laughs> and got sort of, like, stared down. So they, uh, they stuck to the back. Hands shoved in their pockets. anybody know what's on the menu today if you look there's a there's like a, a parchment uh affixed to the wall and it says uh protein a protein b vegetable a b and c and uh, uh drink um that is not Particularly descriptive. She tries to like what? look around his ears to see what else, like what if someone's walking with a tray, if she can see what's on it. Um, you get the whiff of food. Um, and the person walks away with a tray 
of rectangles. Oh. They're stacked in fun ways. You think you might have some fun, like, playing with your food, but... I got in trouble for playing with my food. That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like they can keep me here. I mean, they can't, like, bring me here anyway. I'm already here. I'll play with mm. it again. <gasps> Mushroom stairs! I think, uh, I'm just gonna go and read for the rest of the time. I don't want to get anything on the pages. I, I'm just going to be right over there. But did you honestly get you anything? Why, why you're, no, why you're reading? No, no, you sure? no, no, no. I am very, very sure. Thank you. Okay. And then I just kind of walk where, wherever there's available space to kind of yeah. read by myself. Did you go for shady or sunny seating? Oh, I think sunny. I think sunny. Um, yeah, I have a feeling I'm not going to be getting a lot of that. So I'm going to take advantage while I can. Fair. Uh, so yeah, you find a, you find a um, sort of a, this is very like postmodern furniture. It's just rectangular concrete benches. Um, and uh, so you find one that's in more of a sunny spot. Uh, the courtyard is open to the air. Um, so the rest of you get in line to eat, I assume? Or get in line to food? <laughs> um, and v uh, Valaine was in the back of the line, so you get behind them, and uh, they just kind of glance back and keep looking for, like, ways to kind of scoot in but the line's just pretty locked in is as un as un see unappetizing doesn't quite cover it um as unrealistic as this food is um uh, and everyone is hungry so no one is letting them cut uh, so you're all sitting there for a while and then just sort of shuffle tray gets moved shuffle forward tray gets moved shuffle forward uh and eventually you get put in front and you are greeted by a uh, a goliath uh big burly guy um with um with tattoos going up past his face he's got this sort of slate gray skin and he appears to be shirtless except for an apron uh that says um consensually kiss the chef and uh and he's uh he's sort of waiting for orders just like yeah, what do you want? Do you have anything that is not made from mushrooms, please? Um... Probably. I will yeah. have whatever that is then, please. Okay. Thank what you. about the rest of you? Um, I'll have the same as her. Not mushrooms. Okay. What do you want, big guy? Which one would you pick? The I, drink. That then I will I will have the drink. Uh, thick or frozen? How how would you take it? With my eyes closed. Oh. Then I will take it frozen. That way it will last longer. Uh, the Goliath just kind of grumbles a nod and turns. And as he turns, thank God he's wearing pants. Um, so <laughs> uh, he walks towards the back. And it's it's a pretty small little like cubicle he's basically in. And uh, he looks and uh, I think Paru and Harland from a height perspective will probably see this a little better than Beza will. Um, that there is a kind of a little flower box uh, in the back of the cubicle where it appears things are growing rectangularly. Um, they're in the they're in the dirt. And there looks like there is some sort of like plastic casing over like a carrot or like 
over another thing that you can't quite identify. Um, one might be a zucchini or something, and um, and they're being purposefully formed in these rectangular shapes. Um, so there is a moment of like, oh, thank God it actually is food. It just doesn't... They just want to play building blocks with their food. Um, so the guy, uh, the, the Goliath, um, pops one of the plastic things off, kind of looks smells it not a mushroom and he kind of pulls that out um <laughs> he pulls something else out um goes into a what looks like a little um kind of a kind of an air dryer what, what you call a dehydrator that's what you call it, dehydrator uh like with these little racks and there's just all these little rectangular strips of meat um and he pulls a couple of those out and uh goes to a some sort of keg and cracks uh cracks the the spout on the keg and you see this little burst of like cold kind of come out of it and you don't see what he's putting in a in a cup uh and then he comes back and he he gives you guys your food so so what you have is uh these like little rectangular pieces of jerky essentially um you've got a whole zucchini <laughs> raw <laughs> and a uh, a goblet of um something that's the same color as your shirt um it's just gray and and it it at least is not a block of frozen something and it looks like it's got a slushy consistency um yeah there you go well thank thank you for your preparation of our meal sir Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. Paru immediately uh, picks the mushroom out from underneath her hat and starts like making it climb the stairs of her food only, not anyone else's. Um, Valaine had sort of wandered to the back of you all when you got to the front of the line and hadn't ordered anything. Uh, and when you all start walking away, uh, Valaine kind of like lifts they're uh lifts themselves up on the counter and kind of glances into the thing like inside the cubicle and then hops back out and, and follows you guys um so uh so you all head towards all yet okay um so you've got your tray of food and drink <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you uh, arrive uh, where Oliette has been sitting in the sun reading. What kind of book are you reading? Um, I think this one is uh, kind of like a, a philosophical book about like why we have created fairy tales, um, mm -hmm. what the purpose serves in society. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, when life is lacking drama having to create it and all of these arguments for and against um kind of like a, a critique of mm -hmm. the genre um you hear over your shoulder uh valaine just some uh light reading there sunshine uh, uh, uh i just slam the book shut uh yeah it's not it's nothing it's nothing, it's nothing. It's nothing. that is a What's very that? thick nothing uh and she uh he wandered uh they wandered to the table um they sit across from you just kind of like it's weird he, they're, they're kind of like looking at you but then also like trying to look like they're not looking at you sort of in like a very nonchalant like whatever sort of thing so you all sit down with your food <laughs> What is that stuff? Well, it, it is, it is square. Uh, I think this is vegetable B. For block. <laughs> um, so what is, uh, Harlan will take a, a sip of the, mm -hmm. of beverage. And uh, what is it, what does it taste like? It tastes like a protein shake sneezed. Ugh. Yeah, that that about that that about tastes exactly like how I feel right now. 
Um, you hear um, in the distance, oh, you have 10 minutes left in your physical activity allotted time. What's a fairy tale? I didn't think fairies had tails. Um, well... Um... Hold on, tech issue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh... You know... Stories... I like stories. Uh, hold on. You hear a clang in the distance as uh, a few folks, few younger folks from uh, uh, from the group, have started trying to basically play hacky sack with one of the the drink cups in the corner, <laughs> and you hear the Goliath go, "Oi! You cut that out!" And they they kind of like, hear the clang to the ground. They they try to like. Then they look at like maybe the beef jerky, and they try to like mush that up into a ball, and then proceed to try to continue playing their hacky sack. Um, it works a little better actually. It's quieter and it has just enough give. There's a little bit of a bounce to it, um, which is very upsetting. Uh, but yeah, you. Uh, the vegetable bee is actually not that bad. Um, it literally is just a raw zucchini. <laughs> it has some corners, which is weird. Uh, it's a weird mouth feel. But everything on the tray has a weird mouth feel. So <laughs> can't really do much about it. Daisy doesn't eat anything, but she mm. pops the two bricks of food for later in case somebody gets hungry. Villain remembers this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, I, I guess I guess we're gonna be here for a bit. So, um, it it is a pleasure to have been in uh, the meeting with you earlier. Um, my name is Harlan, and uh, I, I I come from the farms up up north, and. Uh, and yeah, but yeah, I, I think I told you all of it before in in the meeting to that to that nice elven lady. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm Paro. I I come from the uh, the mushroom farms in the underdeck. Uh, I didn't know that they had mushroom farms. Yeah, it grows really well down there. If you ever oh. had uh, smush wine. Because that is what my family harvests, is mush wine mushrooms, but I mean, it's not really... Shouldn't... She claps a hand over, like, the mushroom's ears. I don't drink it because, no, gross. We do not eat the mushrooms. Well, but yeah, my... that's what they do. I, I, don't, I don't drink that because my brother said that I can't have it until I'm older. What counts as older? I mean, technically no. now you're older than when he told you that, so you could just... I'm just saying. The lady makes a good point. Maybe I do get to try it. I don't know what it is. It's booze. Booze? It's Alcohol. voluntary poison that people drink in order to get shit face. That's just stupid. Yeah. Why would anybody want that on their face? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's a turn of phrase. I don't, I don't, I mean, I've never, I've never, but uh, I'm not saying I, I wouldn't, but I've, I've never, and I don't think that's what it means. Yeah, it's gonna be a long day. <sighs> you just, they just kind of go into their own. <laughs> so if you've been here before, what comes next? What do we have to do next? Do we have to sit down in more boring meetings and listen to somebody talk to us? It does talk a lot. 
Or do we like get to do other things? Or is it more la la la, my name is Janet. Do you hear what you have to do to not be a bad person? Well, um, kind of depends. Uh, but I know that they, you get library time. That's part of it. Um, that could be interesting. That's very good news. I mean, it's climate controlled. So that's kind of nice. What does that mean? It's cool. I'd be all right with that. Yeah, there's some pretty good corners. You can get a good nap in there. Oh, I love naps. Naps are the best. That's what the books are, right? Mm hmm Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be important. So I'd really like to learn if someone can teach me. I, I would be happy to teach you. Just stick with me. Well, I guess you are not going to get a lot of work done with that kind of attitude. What do you mean? You do everybody else's work, you're not going to get any of your own shit done. Oh, I mean, I'm very efficient. Um, but I don't mind helping. I'm not asking to do my work on me. I can do work. I'm just trying to learn how to read so I can do the work. It's different. Exactly. Seems to me you could uh, plead ignorance and get away with a lot more not, wor not worrying about it, man. Hmm. Yeah, but I have to prove I deserve to exist. I gotta do everything I can. That's you know how you prove you that? You just exist. And it didn't work out so well for me so far because I'm here. Yeah, well, you'll be fine. You hear a, oh. Two minutes until your scheduled physical activity time is up. I started seeing people kind of shuffle and, uh, please throw away your, <laughs> please throw away your residual uh, food in the receptacle at the exit. Oh, shoot. I didn't touch mine. Hang on. <laughs> and, and Harlan just proceeds to, like, plug his nose and then like try to oh, just try. put a cor put a corner of the square goblet into in, in, into his mouth and just kind of like funnel it you and hear you hear oh. very quietly from Valaine chug 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 that phrase i understand <laughs> <laughs> this but does Beza have any like little storage compartments inside herself um t maybe one I I'd allow um what are you thinking of having hidden away just for the food yeah, yeah you could like fold up the the rectangles of, of beef jerky and then I mean you're probably gonna have to clean out whatever <laughs> storage space you're dealing in or otherwise you're just gonna like waft jerky everywhere you go <laughs> There are probably worse smells in this place. It's a really sort of sanitary place. You walk through and it kind of just smells like nothing. Like they, like it doesn't even smell like cleaning stuff. It just, nothing. It's it's weird. Taru this place is just the epitome of zucchini up into her hat. <laughs> There's a tiny bit more height to your hat when you do that. <laughs> It's good. You're yeah. now how 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 high how tall were you? Uh, I was just under two feet tall, so now I'm like two one. <laughs> exactly. There you go. <laughs> so uh, you start following this group of uh, other reacclimation guests uh, out of the courtyard, and you're kind of all filtered into a couple of. Um, into a couple of different directions. Um, you see that some of them are being uh, sent over to a mailing room. Um, and then uh, a few others are being taken out to the gardens, is what it was called. And then uh, 
you all are given uh, the option of um, uh, there's a uh, like a, a downstairs storage space or library duty. Do we get to choose? Mm-hmm. Oh, library. Me, me, me. Come on, Beza. Uh, so, library, I guess. Oliet leading the way, uh, enthusiastically, <laughs> um, and uh, you are sent to your first uh, community service task. Um, you arrive at the library um, in the acclamation um, center, and it is a very dense room. It is not designed to be a lovely place to sort of pull a book off a shelf and read. Uh, it is very much like the physical manifestation of a database. <laughs> uh, there are just, just, I mean, Harland, you're a broad fella. <laughs> and it's kind of like, oh, it's a little close. <laughs> Walking down some of these, uh, no, not some, every single one of them. They're all equidistant um, from each other and, and the same width. Uh, so you are... Um, you are shown these rows and rows and rows and like an extra story up of just books and tomes and scrolls. Um, and you are approached by a, um, by a human, a uh, human man with uh, a full beard, uh, sort of brown with, with like gray streaks on it. Uh, it seems very tired <laughs> Um, and, and oddly, there's a mix of gratitude, but also dread on his face as he sees the new recruits coming in, uh, in their jumpsuits. And, uh, and he just sort of, his jumpsuit is a sort of a brown rather than a, a gray, uh, indicating some, some sort of hierarchical difference between you. Um, and, and he just sort of pushes a cart full of books and, and waves a hello as he approaches. Um, hello? Hi! You're the... Uh, Hi! The I... involuntary volunteers. No! I take oh, it. Um, she yeah. had totally volunteered. She The second that they said the library was an option, uh, Oliette was like, yeah, no, pick me, 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 pick me. Mm -hmm. That's very That's good. absolutely true. You know what they say, enthusiasm is one-tenth of how you pass your acclamation. Um, my name is Josiah. It's a um, pleasure. I'm Paru. Nice to meet you, Josiah. Mm -hmm. I'm Beza. Mm -hmm. ha Harlan, hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Looks only at it's the same order. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Aliet uh, Zendahar. I don't know. I, I don't know. Since you're a purveyor of fine books, I don't. You might have heard of or met my uncle, who owns um, the the fine and rare tomes uh, in the middle of the city. Um, I am very, very well acclimated with uh, organizing books and uh, reading them and helping people find them. So, like, I am the person for this job. Absolutely. Wonderful. Great. Um, well, uh, have at it then, I suppose. Um, so I've got, um, you can start with these. And he just sort of backs away from the cart. <laughs> um, I'm going to get some tea. Uh, there are numbers on the books. And there are numbers on the shelves. You get the gist. <laughs> but wait, so, may I ask about the organization of the numbers? Is it like by, you know, organized by number and within like an alphabetical order? Or is it like a decimal system? What are we looking at here? It is unfathomable and ineffable. You just put the numbers in the numbers together. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry I don't have more information. I asked these questions years ago, and I'm just tired of not having the answer. You, how long you been here? Years ago. Oh. 
very long time. That's of my own enough. choice, of course, but still a long time. Anyway, I would like some tea, so I'm going to go now. That's a different beverage from what they had at lunch. You had the drink. Yeah, it would. Well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell when I ad lib something? <laughs> <laughs> he just has this very grave look on his face. And he puts a hand on your shoulder in this kind of like very parental way. <laughs> you poor boy. Oh, sorry. You poor boy. Well, well, yeah, we didn't have much growing up, but I don't know what that's. You brave, brave soul. Oh. Well, th thank you, um, I think. All I get meanwhile has already moved to the shelves and is trying to figure out whatever this number system is because it makes no sense. It very much doesn't. Um, it's very reminiscent of the um, the math you saw um, on the walls on the way in. It um, Like, you see numbers, you're like, okay, you can sort of... Like, you find one match right away, which gives you a lot of enthusiasm and, like... I can do this. And then you look at all the other numbers and there's like, why is there a quadratic? I don't understand. <laughs> it's very upsetting. It's like, there are not supposed to be numbers on these books <laughs> in this way, <laughs> not this kind of numbers. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so uh, Josiah leaves you uh, to your own devices in the library. Gave no indication of when he would be back. Um, you, and, and he just sort of hear his feet getting distant <laughs> um and so yeah so uh you have been tasked with looking at these books and putting them away presumably um oh my God, who wants to attempt to as big as i am mm -hmm. some of them are the ones on the bottom of the cart are there's some real thick ones um but they're this seems to be a collection of books that have been acquired from like every subject every um like every language every possible culture you can think of every like, like i said every subject matter uh, or subject area it it is weird that it's just it's just a repository there's not even like a there doesn't seem to be like any sort of curation to it it's just information is being brought here to be put on the shelves the worst organization system I've ever, ever seen. I, I, how do they find anything? What if we redid it and made it better? I mean, that's, oh. that would be like, uh, I mean, that's, that's effort spent and maybe we don't have to write a book report if we like absorb and reorganize all of the books. We should organize them by color. I mean, color. I still want to do the book report. <gasps> Read book colors! We start with the big red ones, and then we move all the way to the tiny black ones, and then we organize them in descending color order. I can that do that. Is that's organization system. But what about people that are colorblind? Oh, that's a good point. Author makes the most sense. Or you could do subject matter slash genre, and then do authors within it. Um, that would also make sense. Well, like um, that genre, then yeah. author. Hmm? I don't know. They don't like things changed, apparently. At least from what I've seen. Are we going to get in trouble for doing that? I mean, we, I don't think so, because you know how they said that the enthusiasm is only 10%, but what if creativity or ingenuity is the is another 10%? Like, maybe this is a trick quiz, and we, and we just we just figured it out. And they gotta be open to change because it brought us here. Right, right, exactly. So if we, and I mean, you said you have to prove like that you you should exist, right? So what if you do something so amazing they cannot deny that your function is to be a bookinary? That's not the word, but yes, I I think we're on the right track here. It's not the right. Okay. All right. Where is Valaine, by the way? Oh, okay. So you're looking for Valaine now. Okay. Just um, casually looking. <laughs> just looking around. Um, you hear a rustling and a creaking 
to your uh, to your right on the other side of a bookshelf, and um, it's going up. <laughs> and as you look on top of the bookshelf, you see a pair of boots uh, crossed um, on top of the bookshelf, and a uh, the turning of pages up on top of the bookshelf. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you're supposed to be up there. How else am I supposed to get any reading done with all that noise you're doing down there? What you reading? I don't know. You hear like a big centerfold being opened? <laughs> Some kind of did subway you... map. Oh, huh. get that off the cart? No. I know that sound. You best not be using the outhouse up there. <laughs> it's fine, Jim Blue. Everything's good. Um, he just, uh, Valaine, they, they lean over and you see the book and it seems to be a, a metronome station guide. Um, and, uh, you can see it from the from high up. Uh, they're like, it's got to be like fifteen feet up. <laughs> it's a very tall bookshelf. Um, and uh, uh, Valene just sort of shrugs. I don't know. It had a pretty cover. And then he goes. They go back to reading, reading, <laughs> looking at the pictures. I guess. <laughs> I guess there's words in a in a subway map. But can you go other places from the metronome? I mean, it connects everything, right? So you could potentially find a, an adventure somewhere. Maybe. Chronograms Maybe go to we the should chronograms. just focus on this. Well, yeah, no, we should totally <laughs> focus on this. But I just, I'm just... There's possibilities everywhere. You just gotta find them. You're yeah. gonna be here for a long time, small fry. I just hear Valene from the distance. Like a day or three? Yep, like a day or three. Oh, I'm gonna have a long time. Are those possibilities watching us now? <laughs> um. Wh what? Said they were e everywhere and endless, right? Because. No, but they're okay. But they're but. Uh, they're not watching if they are they are there for you to take advantage of they don't watch you well i mean i guess some might watch you i don't know i'd have to ask my hair but that's kind of like a thing and that's very confusing and, yeah i gotta sit down okay let me hang on oh god i forgot she's you're still clinging so yeah you're just like holding on to some i don't know an ear a shoulder the jumpsuit mean you have to ask your hair oh i can ask my hair questions and sometimes it talks back but yeah Blaine so we should talk out from the bookshelf <laughs> <laughs> like with words yeah i mean kind kind of i mean okay so it's it's like a thing it's like so I can ask questions, you know, they're like, is this going to be good or is this going to be bad? And then and there's huh. like a feeling that comes over you. And sometimes you get like flashes of, of like of things. And and sometimes um, like the Gobble Yaga talks to you. And it's very interesting. I like it when that happens because it's really, the, really nice. The, and the Pardon? The Gobble Yaga. Hmm. Uh completely bypassing whatever that is. Uh, Valaine reaches down as far as they can go and pulls a book out. Is this book going to be good or bad? Um, I will find out. Uh, does anybody have any scissors? Uh, Valaine pulls out <laughs> at the same time that Beza pulled out a scimitar, uh, Valaine pulls out their butterfly knife. And hands and like offers it, but that is much taller than Beza. Beza is probably much easier to access. Um, I, I think it'd be easier if if Beza does it. Do it yourself. 
All right. So she um, walks over to... Basically, are your scimitars detachable or, or are they... Okay. So she just kind of holds up... Her arm, her arm. Like her arm out so okay. that it's at like your chest level so that it's easy for you to reach and just hold her hand still. Okay, so uh, Paru walks over and she kind of leans forward and just a little strand of her hair, she pushes against the blade and cuts it and uh, uh, does her... Uh, Oh my gosh, my brain just forgot what it was called, and that's I wrote it. Mm-hmm. That's the worst part of it. <laughs> I wrote it, and I forgot. Uh, it's cutting, okay. cutting fake strand. Okay. And we'll do uh, the. Oh, I guess I don't technically have access to that spell yet, do I? Mm-hmm. But here's what I'll do. Um, give me a uh, give me a charisma check. Ooh, that'll, that'll go well. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say it. We didn't say you got answers all the time. <laughs> Seventeen. That's not bad. Okay, not bad. it was at eighteen. But sure. you know. <laughs> uh, what is your question that you're specifically? If thinking? I read this book, would it be very good and interesting? Hmm. Okay. Um, what is the manner that Paru typically gets visions or answers? What, what, what form does that typically take? Um, sometimes visions, sometimes whispers. More often than not, it's like a little whisper inside of her head that comes back, but it's not necessarily coherent. The times when it's really coherent is times that she doesn't cut her hair and it just kind of comes and she doesn't get the option. So you ask this question into the great beyond with your hair in your hand. Um, and uh, Valaine, in an attempt to get back up, because they leaned very far down to get that book originally, uh, is trying to like basically crawl back up the bookshelf. Uh, and there's a bit of a wobble as they're just like, okay. They start pulling back up. And that shake... Uh, dislodges a different book off the shelf. Uh, it falls and it falls open um, near uh, Harlan's feet. It's a oh, no. very large... Oh no, no, no! <laughs> you heard a crack, Olia. You heard a crack of a spine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this book just boom! And it's, it's open and one of the pages might have been bent when it hit the ground. Um, I think the answer is that that one's better. Pick it up. Um, so yeah, you pick it up. It's a it's like a picture history book. There's actually a little pop-up to it. Um, there's like a little tab um, and there's like a boat attached to the tab. So you can pull it and it makes the boat go back and forth between these two islands, like the trade route it would have. Um, That absolutely is a better book. (laughs) Um, And you, Harland, uh, Harland very enamored with the book. Paru, um, you hear uh, a noise from up where the book was. Uh, You hear a little... And uh, you look up where the book fell out of, and there's like a pair of beady eyes looking from inside the bookshelf at you. Um, it kind of like scoots a little back. Hello, friend. It's okay. I won't hurt you. Do you want to come say hi? She'll kind of hold her hand up, like, "Do you want to come talk to me?" I promise. I'm very nice and very gentle, and I will not hurt you. Oh, oh! She pulls out the zucchini from underneath her hat and offers it to the mouse. It's not a mouse. Oh, or the rat. Uh, it sounds like a mouse. Uh, it, there is a rodent-like quality to it. Yeah, she offers um, it to the rodent. Okay, uh, give me an animal handling check. Ooh. What is my animal handling? Oh, okay, that's not bad. 
How did my dice just walk away? Oh, it was in my mushroom. Uh, 15. Okay. Um, you... You reach up with this rectangular zucchini and you... you you can actually like kind of plop it up there. It doesn't roll. It just sits there. Um, and you you hear the little and sort of skittering. You hear um, you hear nails on the sort of metal shelving. Um, and from the little shadow, you see like a like a stoat, like a little Ooh. weasel sort of creature. Um, Except from your angle, you're seeing the stoat. It's got it's got like sort of a like a white belly, and um, but you're seeing you see sort of like something kind of on its neck and back. You can't quite see it very well, but it kind of looks like it has like scales on its back. It, it's hard to see from how low you are compared to it. She's gonna start climbing up the shelf. <laughs> Okay. Oh, um, no, what are you doing? Oh, oh no! Don't, he might be afraid and stuck or something. I want to make sure he's alright. Okay. in so much trouble. <laughs> she, she just starts climbing. Uh, um, so yeah, you climb up the uh, up the shelving. It's pretty sturdy. Um, for you, you're not too heavy. So you uh, you kind of climb up up here. There's you you get your foot on a on an encyclopedia and it hits the ground but you get your feet back up and you continue climbing and i'm just living for every goddamn expression from our sad little book girl um and, uh, and, is literally standing underneath her trying to catch them as they fall oh god um it's like an old so, school disney game from yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like a Mr. Gametron or whatever it is. <laughs> um, so, uh, Paru, as you get to the, the shelf that this little creature is on, uh, you hear it, like, sort of... And you see what looks like a, uh, a stoat, but it, it, it almost has, like, the back of a pangolin. It's got these very, like, pinecone-esque uh, uh, tiled scales going down its back and it has like it it like ends at a tail like a like a long tail kind of prehensile almost so it's it's sort of like it's sort of like moving like a snake its tail as it's like chomping down on this zucchini um uh, hi Fred. it kind of has be little black eyes and kind of what are you i've never seen anything just like keeps you eating he's okay i won't hurt you i promise um, it, uh, you rolled, you said 17? Yeah. Or 15. 17. Animal handling. 17. Um, my charisma check So, 15. yeah, uh, so you, um, you read, what are you reaching for it? Yeah, just, I'm gently putting my hand down. Um, it kind of scoots a little bit closer. If a stoat could look incredulous, <laughs> um, scoots a little closer, um, kind of sniffs at your hand, and its eyes turn to your hat. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, and it's just kind of sniffing out. Like it, it's got its paw kind of up, and it's like leaning She'll towards you. Sniff. Okay. It uh, it nibbles at the brim of your hat a little, <laughs> um, and then kind of, kind of sits back on the uh, on the shelf. She lifts up her hat like, "You want to come inside? You want to hang out? You want to be friends?" <laughs> it turns back to the zucchini. Uh, starts uh, starts munching a little more, um, and uh, it seems very content to eat this bizarre vegetable um and it's just chilling there it's a uh, very cute you've never seen anything like it before um and it's just living in this library apparently i wonder where you came from i don't know but i don't think it's supposed to be in here harland is there a picture of it in the book that fell out maybe maybe you can tell me it <laughs> i've been called out in chat <laughs> 
I mean, sure, I, I could take a look. Uh, sure, uh, yeah. Mm. So Harlan will look down and start to kind of thumb through the pages quickly and see if he can find a picture of the of the creature. Oh, yeah, you're smart, uh, right? Uh, very. Have I heard of this before, DM? Do I um, you is? look at it and, like, you can sort of piece together, like, the hybrid it is, but it's so weird to see something that is, like, this mix of a small rodent and, uh, ostensibly some sort of, like, it almost makes you think a little bit, like, draconic. Like, it, it's got the scaly bit and the prehensile tail. It gives you that kind of vibe. Um, very odd to have, like, sort of a reptilian and mammal mix like that. I don't think I know what that is exactly. We probably shouldn't touch it in case it's poisonous. Or maybe <laughs> carrying mites or something. The plague! You hear Villain say, like, Vincent Price on the top of the bookshelf. I've Are you ready to help us? It. It's fine. Nope. He's you seem like cute. you're doing real good there, Sunshine. Oh. I mean, I could carry it. I'm immune to disease. <laughs> I love oh. when details like that work out. Um, <laughs> uh, he's just chilling, eating the zucchini, though. Um, Harland, uh, you're looking through the book. Uh, you check the cover. It says Little Big Boy's First Book of Maritime Economics. And, um, and there's more pop-up parts. It teaches you the types of boats. It teaches you about currents. There's like a little wheel that you can turn and it shows how like wave currents work and why um, there's um, there's all sorts of little things like that. Uh, you see a um, you see a big map of all the different continents, which is actually very new information for you, Harland. You have never seen a map of all the other continents. You've only ever seen a map of all the chronograms and the subway map. That's all you've ever seen before. Um, and you, yeah, there's places you don't recognize. There's big all, land masses you don't know. What what's all, what's all this blue stuff and then there's this green stuff. I like I like the way it looks though. It's it, it's it's neat. Um. Uh, all the do you, what. What what am I looking at here? What's what's what? Do, tell me, please. Uh, well, um, this is this should be at about your reading level. The words aren't very big. It's basically, uh, you know, it's learning about the ocean and traveling on the ocean and how all that works. Well, that's that's very that's very nifty. Oh, oh, hey, Para, I think I found one of your things. It's climbing on a rope towards one of these boat things. There is a little tab with this little creature that has a big stoat face and little scales, and it's going... You can move it back and forth. Um, <laughs> there's a weird little box in the corner that talks about plague transmission. Um, <laughs> uh, fire plague, it was actually called. Hmm. Interesting. Does anyone read the paragraph, or do you just see the big headline uh, that's immediately? Immediately, are we all okay. about to get the fire plague? <laughs> it talks about how uh, historians often misattributed the spread of the fire plague to these creatures, when in fact there were parasites on these creatures that um, they ate normally as a, as a form of uh, sustenance when they were on these long boat rides, but. Um, apparently the parasites were what were in fact spreading this plague, not the creatures themselves. Um, they called them, uh, fire weasels. Um, that's not like the official name, but that was like what the sailors shortened it to. Angela, can I have a fire weasel, please? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I don't think we should touch that thing. Apparently it might carry bugs that could make most of us really sick. You hear a squeaking and munching. Seems pretty harmless, squeaking yeah, and munching. I don't know about that. I mean, he, he seems so 
so sweet and, and cute and cuddly and fierce. Uh, uh, you're a fierce, fierce book dragon boy. Yes, you are. You're a fierce book dragon boy. <laughs> I adore this. I'm just I'm telling wicked. you what it says in the book. Oh, I, I could ask it if it if it's got if it's got any any plague or anything like that. If it's dangerous. You, you, you want to you wanna talk to my friend Harlan? He's really big and blue and he's really nice. And sometimes he lets you ride on his shoulder. Oh, Very quick no, to get places back it, can, it can talk to me, but I won't understand it. I, I just, I just, I can make myself understood oh. to, to little critters like that. So you're going to ask it a question and then not be able to understand its answer? Well, if it does like, you know, one of them show pigs that, you know, you scratch once for yes and scratch two for no. You know? They... Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do, Harlan? So uh, he will use uh, his uh, innate furball ability, uh, speech of beast and leaf, to uh, communicate with uh, this fire weasel stoat lizard dragon thing so this is a one-way communication you can speak to it and it gets the gist of what you're saying correct okay okay so what do you do how are what are you trying to communicate to the fire weasel essentially that like well okay so did oliet communicate the reason that the uh the the, the plague actually happens or is it just like yes. the fact that these are dangerous? Okay. She so read it like, out loud. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Perfect. Slowly. So, um, I <laughs> thank Holy. you. Uh, I think he would, he would communicate. Um, this is what Harlan wants to communicate. Okay. Do you know if you got any little itchy critters all over you? how he communicates it is apologies to anyone with mouth noise problems <laughs> i know i started this <laughs> i apologize um okay so uh the fire weasel just kind of like if a stoke could look incredulous this stoke also looks like what the fuck it kind of like puts it back a little. It, it is not expecting a uh, very um, coherent response from a big person. Um, and uh, it kind of like. Very, very wise. It like cocks its head like almost 90 degrees. Like it just doesn't know what's happening. Um, and it takes a second and then it kind of scratches. It just goes back to eating. Doesn't seem like it, it's it seemed like it was scratching experimentally. Um and satisfied that it didn't need to anymore, it presumed it proceeded to continue eating. Well, I, I don't I don't speak fire critter, but it don't look like he got them parasites. Mm -mm. Perfectly safe. Is there a book about you that we could learn more? Give me another animal handling. Oh, God. Yay, high wisdom. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Oh, I... 14? Okay. Uh, the fire weasel immediately leaps off the bookshelf um, and spreads its limbs out, and it goes... Pfft, and it has, like, glidey, and it hits the next bookshelf and starts climbing down and disappears around a corner. I, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm we sorry. Fall well, now we can get back to organizing books. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was a fascinating read and a fascinating turn of events, but if we can put this back on whatever shelf it's supposed to be on, I don't think it was my... Yeah. You forgot your zucchini. And she just kind of sits well, there Harlan, sadly. Harlan, you can figure out where that book goes because there's a half-eaten zucchini on the spot where it was. So he'll just like <laughs> eye the zucchini and just kind of like push the book back. 
you know, with, oh, with no. just like, but just Wait. until it stops, just until it, like not like forcing it, just like. I but will, with the I'm... zucchini still in the bookshelf. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take the zucchini and put it back under my hat because I'm still up there, so I'll just. Okay, so you're yeah. like, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Part of you's just like, that. they'll find it eventually if we leave it there long enough. <laughs> okay, so you have a little nibbled zucchini rectangle. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sad. A memento to remember your uh, your deep connection to the spider weasel. Uh, and Harland, you put Little Big Boy's first book of maritime economics back on the shelf, and um, and and you feel a sense of accomplishment. You've put a book away in the correct spot. I'm a natural. <laughs> oh, boy. There were fractions on the spine of that book. Um, just. Only at just for your information, <laughs> nonsensical you. fractions. Um, so yeah, you uh, you're left in the hall uh, or in the aisle, um, and there is still the cart of books. Uh, the fire weasel scurried off in a direction that you did see, and uh, uh, yeah. So what uh, what do you do for the next ten minutes? I am going to pick up a book. And go, oh, I know where this one goes, and try and follow the fire weasel. Like, I'm just uh -huh. taking this back where it goes. Totally. Yep, yep. you're not following at it. All. You're going, going, yeah, yeah, numbers, numbers, yeah. Mm hmm. And, and you see like a triangle, and you see uh, like a four. Yeah, there's numbers. It's fine. Um, and you <laughs> follow in the path that you saw the fire weasel fly. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. Um, you did notice that it's little glides did kind of have like a, like a bat wing or a, a, like a dragon vibe under the arms. It wasn't flying squirrel so much as dragon. Um, so yeah, you, uh, you follow. Okay. So Paru disappears around a corner, ostensibly looking to put a book away that she is very confident. She knows where it goes. Uh, what are the rest of you attempting to do in, uh, the next few minutes, uh, with, your assignment. Uh, Harlan would just push the cart wherever Oliette would direct. It's okay. just, it's about what he's good at is pushing, pushing stuff around. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so you have a library assistant, Oliette. Um, uh, if you tell me where the big heavy books go, I can put the heavy ones away. I'm really strong. Uh, yeah, if you, Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, and she huh? up as many books off of the cart as a. Uh, oh, no, I forgot I made her dexterous, not strong. Fighter. My brain went to strength. Um, okay, as many books as she can pick up with an 11, which is still probably surprising considering how tiny she is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can get a couple in your hand, like some of the really big ones. Um, some of them seem to be bank records. Um, old bank records like why the hell are you keeping this like this belongs in a museum um, but uh, so you're you're just carrying these gigantic books um, it can fit whole equations on the spine the spine's so big um, so you have like uh, you have a couple of those you're looking around you there seems to maybe be a rhyme or reason but it's going to take a while to find out where all these books should go. Um, so you're just kind of carrying them along. Um, uh, you, um, you hear from a bookshelf above you again, um, even though you've been walking, um, and you hear uh, Josiah uh, from atop the bookshelf. Oh, you whippersnappers, you, you pish posh and all of that. That's not, that's not very helpful. Do you know where this one goes? What's in that tea? You look up and Valaine is staring at you from top of the thing with a grin on her face. <laughs> that's not funny. Oh, it's a little funny. We're never going to get this done if you don't help. Why do you think I'd be good at this? You've been here the longest. You should know where all of this stuff is by now. The library is like one thing here. 
No, but it's the most important thing here. <sighs> and, uh, Valene climbs down. All right, let me see. And he picks up a book and kind of flips through it. Okay, so this goes here. And he puts no. that in a random spot. And this no, 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 no. goes here. What? Well, I'm putting them away. All he has like is faint at this point. <laughs> Wait, what? What'd you say, Chris? I said Oliet looks faint at this point. Fine, fine, fine. Sincere attempt. Puts a book off. Um, Alright, so what's this book about? Um, this is a book of tax code. Super interesting. Um, there's like government stuff over there points to an aisle down the way i remember because i was looking up uh i was looking up defending yourself in court mm, i'm not gonna get into that right now <laughs> they don't seem super serious but it is like there's a there's a there's a this much truth to it maybe um <laughs> and uh and so yeah so uh so valaine just kind of walks towards that book and is like oh hey there's sevens on these there's a seven on this one that's more of a match than than not okay so you all uh start heading in that direction uh trying to put something away <laughs> Just put one away. It'll feel like a victory if you just put one book in the right spot. It does feel good. Um, yeah, see, Harlan's riding that high and is, like, ready, like, ready to score again. Um, <laughs> Paru. Um, we, we should discuss. Um, can I get a perception? No... What are you going to be doing to find this uh, this stoat? How do you go about finding something that you're trying to follow? Huh. Um, I'm trying to think. She probably... She's not really great. She'd probably be trying to trust her intuition. Mm -hmm. Um... She seemed to have had a knack for divining things as a kid, so I think she's probably just kind of relying on that sense of, come on, there's got to be something fun and interesting in here. And I really like that little friend, and yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let's say, give me an, give me an insight check. Okay. What is my insight? Oh, Lordy. Oh, okay. Not bad. Yeah, I didn't think, I wouldn't think it would be very bad. Natural 20. There's my girl. All right. Oh, so, uh, so Paru, uh, you, you were a little behind the fire weasel when it came to traveling around and, um, but you, uh, luckily these bookshelves are so like close and so like regimented in how full they are it's not like there were many places for it to scurry into because they're kind of like really tight and there's not like a lot of space so you do catch a little scurrying of a tail around a corner and you're like that for a couple of turns where you kind of like see it just before it goes around the corner and you're like you you cute mother I'm gonna get you and you keep going uh so if anyone's near, if anyone had been nearby, they'd hear like, and then a, of your feet also following. Do you wear shoes or are you barefoot? No, no, I do not so, wear shoes. I am absolutely barefoot. So 100%. Like, so like swim fins, basically, yeah. that sort of noise. Um, and, uh, so you're making a turn, making a turn, making a turn. It's like Doom from the PC version back in the day. Uh, it's that, it's that screensaver. And uh, She's like talking to her, 
We're gonna find them. We're gonna find them. We're gonna find them. And we're gonna be friends. So, um, you follow the sounds of this fire weasel for a minute or two. Um, and then you hear like, like a chain link. And you turn a corner, you slide into the hole. You're like, I found you. And down the hall, you see the fire weasel squeezing into a cage wall uh, where there are books on the other side. Uh, and it's just kind of like squeezing its way through. It's it's weirdly able to get all smooshy. Um, and it's fitting in to between the bars of this, this like fenced cage thing. Is there a lock on it? Uh, there does appear to be a lock on this, um, on this door. Hey, Evelyn. You don't hear any response. At least not in the media vicinity, if you're talking quietly. Mm, Paru does not do much quietly. <laughs> the light! <laughs> a lock picking thing i gotta put this book back in here and i can't get in can you help me please uh the rest of you uh see valaine's um valaine has slightly pointed ears they're not as pointed as a as an elf um and like their ears kind of perk up someone needs crime i am needed and he kind of like rushes off into the hall into the stacks I love him. Um, yes. <laughs> um, so in so yeah, the, the, he he hands you the book, Oliet, and is just like, "Sorry, sunshine," and like jukes to get <laughs> past you all, and then wanders into the stacks. Should we be worried about that? I don't. I we can't do any crimes in this library. Like, are you kidding me? We gotta go. Oh, I'm sure that we can do some crimes. I didn't say you go after the crimes. <laughs> I just said uh, I had to okay, put a book no away. Crimes. Okay, so so Oliet goes. What about uh, Beza and Harland? What are you are you following? Yeah, pushing the cart. Yep, <laughs> pushing the cart. Okay, great. <laughs> just just trudging along. It takes. It's a little hard to get the turns, but you know you're you're strong enough. Um, and, all right. So the three of you uh, follow uh, Valaine uh, through the stacks, and eventually all of you. Uh, um, arrive at uh this caged wall uh with all these big books on the other side um and uh paru is waiting at uh the gate and at the gate there is this really elaborate lock it is not like a padlock it almost looks like a mix between an astrolabe and a um like a compass so it's kind of like something's moving but it's kind of like in one direction like it, it's almost like magnetic going one direction um so it's this very kind of complicated obtuse looking thing um it also has math on it um because of course it does and uh and valaine walks up to you paru all right sure stack what you got there's this lock and I got this book and I can't put it back because it's locked. Oh, that old chestnut. Gotcha. And uh, kind of looks around at the lock. This sucks. I have no idea up. what this is. But Don't I break don't... it. It looks really old. Just gotta get in uh, there. Um, Valaine kind of glances up and there's like more of the kind of mathematic equation stuff on the top of the wall above the door. Huh. Uh, and Valaine looks down at the lock again. Starts like poking at it with the lock pick that he has which is really it's really just like a metal toothpick it's not 
It's not a lock pick. And even then, you don't have like one lock pick. Like a thieves to like you have more than one thing if you're actually gonna try to pick a lock. Um so he just starts poking at it. Um knows and they're, zero uh, about picking locks. She's just like, mm-hmm. yeah, that thing. Mm-hmm. See, it's more of a like an invalid, <laughs> they start like it you know, it's it's you gotta kinda like feel around, you know, it's it's an intuition thing. It's not oh. really like People talk yeah. to you all the time. It's about like dexterity. It's, it's all about your instincts. <laughs> I totally get it. Instincts are like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I got it. Your instincts. That is exactly why I got to get in this room. It's because that's what my instincts are telling me. I thought it was because you had to Solution to my book, book problem. Yes, see, the solution to my book problem, and she just kind of flashes the book, is in that room, and that is what my instincts are telling me. Hmm. Yeah. Why would they have given us a book to put away that we don't have access to? put it away I, that doesn't make any sense maybe it was maybe a mistake it's, or it's a test <gasps> to see what a good librarian you are that's right does anything make sense in this library also that there i mean the eyes are straight then it's um so so valaine is looking up at the door again at what it's like Almost like they're reading it. Can 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 you read that? Yeah, is that something that any of us would recognize? No, I don't think so. I don't think any of you would would know this. Um, and Zapara, so you asked if they could read it. Mm-hmm. Villain kind of like like they got caught. Uh, it says restricted section, authorized personnel only. Well, we were authorized essentially by Josiah to put these books away, so we're authorized personnel. That is a very good point, short stack. And Valaine gets this very sly grin on their face steps towards the lock and you just see them shed them their normal look and you see Josiah standing in front of you in that ugly brown ju- oh, jumpsuit and uh uh they pick up the the lock the lock is sort of like on a chain and they're kind of like playing around with it with their thumbs and it, there's like pieces that move like it's almost got like a little slidey puzzle thing to it um and uh uh then then Valaine kind of looks up at the door and puts that down and looks and there's like a very tiny little piece of metal plating on the side of the gate and and he and they look at it and there's like um if anybody's close paro you're probably the closest um in the reflection on the light you can see fingerprints on that little metal plate mm-hmm. and valaine puts their hand up well puts josiah's hand up on it mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. uh you hear a little <laughs> And the gate slowly opens, uh, and the chain just apparently was not attached to anything. <laughs> it's, uh, and the gate opens, and uh, Valaine uh, shakes out a non-existent uh, jacket, <laughs> and uh, and does a little bow, and uh, thank you, sir. Basically, uh, and just kind of sits there, proud of themselves. Um, still in Josiah, <laughs> but uh, still very much uh, clearly the expression is is all uh, all them. She holds up a fist for a fist bump as she walks by, holding the book. That that may have been the single most impressive door opening I've ever seen. Right. It was very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't die. Where are you, you cute little? Or, or do whatever. It's fine. I'm not your mom. Uh, and, uh, uh, Valaine wanders in after Paru. 
account. I mean, it'd be a shame. Information, if... sunshine. Come on, secret books. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, they're. It, <laughs> I've probably read them, but there might be one I haven't seen yet. So, okay, okay, okay. Valene gets the distinct impression that they can roll a nat 20 with Oliet all the time <laughs> and is now distinctly taking advantage of it. Don't call me out like that. Jeez. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, so who goes into the restricted section? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Paru and Valene are definitely the instigators of this. And <laughs> Paru just looking for a pet. Um. <laughs> I, I have no idea what books are in here. I do, I do not care. I just want to uh -huh. touch the fuzzy and the scary. <laughs> so the uh, so Paru, um, give me a give me a perception check. Paru's the only one <laughs> rolling tonight. I do acknowledge that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're the one with an active goal. <laughs> uh, sixteen. 16 um all right so you um you see uh rather you you just kind of listen it's a much darker space the the restricted section is not as well lit as the um as the main library no problem oh so a problem so a problem so <laughs> it's problem. much dimmer in here uh normally a goblin would have no problem in darkness but for yep. some reason paru you it's don't dark can't see in the dark like the other goblins could mm -mm. you know people thought maybe you just needed glasses or you know just something you weren't born with and uh so but it's dimmer but that doesn't mean it's pitch black uh there are tiny torches on the sides of the bookshelves that don't give off any heat and the light they give off is a very deep crimson. So the whole restricted section is covered in this red light. It's very symbolic. And um, so, <laughs> but it's not hot at all. So these seem to be like um, artificial lights that would protect the books um, from sunlight, but also would not um, endanger them from, from fire. Um, so this is actually a very well put together library. Thank you, Mike. Candles. Tiny torches. <laughs> I know what I said. Um, so, um, so yeah, so you, um, so Paru, you're, you're sort of looking, it, it's, it's a little hard to parse shapes in this dark red that the whole room is, is covered in. But you do, yeah, what's this? I think you're, you're just, you're just RPing, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so, it was just paro emoting, uh, sorry. It's paroing. Um, oh, yes. So, so through, but but you sort of stand still. And you think, okay, it's hard to tell what's going, it's hard to tell shapes right now, but if I'm super still, maybe I'll notice something. And as you're sort of there, very zen, very focused, must give scritches, um, you see a scurry in the shadows off to the left. Um, do you make a beeline for the for the scurrying? I am going to attempt to move cautiously and slowly. Huh? In an attempt to not be perceived? In an attempt to not startle. If I'm perceived, I am perceived, but I don't want to spook or scare. Okay. I need a stealth check. <laughs> don't go on, here we go. <laughs> Yes, a vegetable beeline. Mm -hmm. That's a six. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Actually, your your brain just kind of goes dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> like you can't really even you can't even really resist it. Um. Anyway, the the fire weasel, kind of like, and like, uh, scurries around another corner. Uh, it's okay, Fred. It's okay. I just brought you your zucchini because he forgot it. Oh my gosh! Uh, did you go after? Yeah. 
Yeah, so you turn a corner. Uh, you all see Paru dart into a corner again, and uh, <laughs> only I did not have to get up. So sorry. I'm uh, and... starting to suspect that this had nothing wait, to do with the zucchini she was holding. <laughs> But wait, the zucchini. Um, so, uh, so you all see Paru dart off, um, and you're all in this sort of um, larger um, aisle of the restricted section. Um, Valene's kind of like glancing through books and um, sort of pulls one out. They're chained. They're all chained to the bookshelves. So clearly, uh, Valene sees one and just goes, oh, no fun, and pushes it back. Um, and uh, shrugs and follows Paru. Yep. So what do you all want to do in the restricted section? Should we follow him? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, probably, I mean, they, they're not going to they're not gonna not come back out this way so I mean if, even if we waited here we'd still run into them again you hear through the stacks oh no I'm gonna do crime well we can't have that now can we <laughs> Alia will reluctantly turn away from the stacks and start to follow them you, your glance at the stacks, though, gives you a sense of the kinds of things that are in here. Um, there are some relatively very esoteric magic books in here. Um, there are some books about um, mythology and uh, and like folklore, which is weird. For I mean, if that's it's like legends, why would that be in here? Um, and there's also some uh, there's also some like family trees in here, like genealogy books uh, in here. Um, and, and there's just tons of things. This is yet again a situation where it seems like information was just being collected in mass mm -hmm. and placed in this library. Um, but these happen to be restricted for some reason. Um, so you guys all follow and uh, Paru, you find the fire weasel um in a corner sort of digging into a book like burrowing like destroying it whoa, whoa, whoa. just like it's okay. It's okay. nesting in a book oh huh. that's hard huh? um and so you just hear <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry it's just like <laughs> um and uh, you see, like, here in the restricted section, there were a couple of books that um, that had been sort of pulled off the shelf or, like, had sort of fallen in the space. A couple of them hanging by their chains. Um, and uh, there's one that is resting open near where the fire weasel is burrowing but it doesn't seem touched luckily it's like this one wasn't apparently tasty enough to turn into scraps um and uh it has like it weirdly has like a chunk of it just blank like there's pages and then there's just like a blank chunk on it hmm. maybe the page got ripped or something she's gonna lean down and offer the rest of the zucchini to the fire weasel that's this reaches out with both hands and just kind of like giant rectangle. <sighs> just kind of she's just like gnawing. It's very like ah, ah, <laughs> trying to eat it. Um, so yeah, seems satisfied in its little hovel and uh, um, and yeah. Uh, Harland, you uh, you feel something at your feet? Um, you see um it, it's almost like something's grabbing at your foot but like not like pulling you it's just grabbing uh, he, he will look down uh there's a hand grabbing your foot like just a hand not attached to anything well just a hand where'd you come from what do you belong to 
Um, and and it's kind of like touching the boot, like it's trying to assess <laughs> what is in front of it. Um, and when you look, it, it's really hard to see details in, in the red light, but it seems like it's made of stone, like actual rock, like jagged rock. It's not a humanoid hand, um, but it's just like this big rocky hand, just kind of like... <laughs> Your foot happened to be in the way, apparently. It's just trying to... Uh, so Harlan will step back and kind of let it let it go on its way. And it's just, and just uh, scurries under a under a bookshelf. Um, you, there's all sorts of creators in here. <laughs> um, so yeah, you uh, you see that hand, and it doesn't seem to want anything to do with you. Luckily. Um, and uh, Beza, you hear a very odd sound here in a library. Um, you hear just the tiniest bit of thunder. Like real tiny. Like an itty bitty thunder. And then you see a little flicker of light behind a book on the shelf. Well, that's different. You hear the thunder again? Did you hear that? That book has thunder coming out of it. Uh, that's impossible. You all look in that direction and you see the little flicker of light, like very, very lightning-esque, uh, sort of flashing behind a couple of books on the shelf that base is near. What's it called? I'm still crouched down, like, trying to see if the little fire weasel will let me pet him or not. He's very interested in the zucchini and very not bothered by you trying to touch it. Oh, pet, 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 pet. So yeah, you get, little, <laughs> like, you get little scratches. Um, I can't read. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what does it say? What, what does it say? <laughs> It says thunder and fury. Um, it is apparently a. Um, it's about like elementals. Uh, this is. I, I'll convey that information to mm -hmm. the group. My uncle would be wild about this. I've never seen a book do this. I had no idea that they. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. I'm getting a little lightheaded here. A... Uh, Oliet, as you look at the book, you also notice that the chain attached to the book is, like, frosted. Grab it, the book, and it's see... The book. Um, you pull the book from the shelf, and the chain is cold. There's, like, some frost on your fingers when you touch it. And behind the book... On the shelf, you see a little thunderhead cloud swirling with little lightning. Um, just kind of chilling there in the back of the shelf. Not in the book. Did it come did it come out of the book? Like like he was in the book that Harlan was looking at, and that book is about thunder and now there's a cloud. Are the things okay, in the books that's coming not how books, to life? Books don't work like that. You can't. Things can't come out of a book. It, that, that's not how. That's not how this works. Um, yeah, because it's not like there's magic or anything. There is oh, wait, magic these... and books are different. What? No, what they about might magic not be. Books? Right. So, uh, one one moment. I I've got something for this too. <laughs> Hang on a second. Oh my god. <laughs> Never done that before. Uh, and he'll use his innate verbal ability to detect magic. Ah, um, okay. Um, <laughs> so, Harland, the room that was once a dark, deep red, you couldn't tell details, it's like someone set a flash bulb off in your face. <laughs> And you look like someone set a flashbulb off in your face. Um, if we were in a cartoon right now, there'd be stars. 
circling your head. Um, it is like neon in here. Everything is lit up. Um, every single book in this area is magic. Um, but you, it's not just the books. There's like, there's movement. Also, it's almost like you're seeing like an X-ray, where you see like you can see the little fire uh, weasel, um, and it's sort of like lit up, and it almost looks like it has um, it almost looks like it has little flames on it, like on its back. In the it's like its aura is sort of flame, um, and you can see the thunder the thunderhead so there's this little cloud and but instead of just like the momentary flash there's just like this just of like electricity going around the cloud and you see somewhere off in the distance <laughs> just this hand kind of glowing in this like otherworldly white uh light um and yeah just everything glows but there is a sort of mist, a kind of like cloud of glow around near where Paru is right now. It's coming out of an open book. Well, y'all, I don't know. I don't know how to tell you this, but it's like it's like that that one that one stuff that Uncle Lonnie brought back to that one barbecue that we had. Um, he got in all sorts of trouble aneurysm? for that. No, what? I, I, I sure don't know what that is, but everything is like real pretty right now, and like, like that that thing's pretty, and that thing's moving, and that thing's glowing, and that that one over there is glowing real bright. That one on the floor over there. This one right here. But I don't, um, I think so. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get that little that little fellow over on the shelf there. I'm gonna just see what that's about. Uh, is gonna like go Hello. over to the 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 thunderhead and like yeah. try to like touch okay. it. <laughs> give me a um, give me a Constitution save. Okay. <laughs> That is a 15. You take one shame damage. <laughs> it's just like, ow! Um, but that's about it. It's very small. <laughs> I love doing is, that. Are there any pockets on this? Uh, on these? Uh, There's like on, a pocket on, these... on the top of the jumpsuit, and you got pockets on the sides. All right. It's very standard. I'm going to try to like wave my hand in front of it to like try to get the, the cloud in your pocket yeah yeah i'm trying to get a cloud in my pocket Shine in my pocket and that cloud um, in your pocket are you just happy to see me <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'm cumul nimble. Oh. Mm. Mm. i want to mm -mm. get disadvantage for that <laughs> <laughs> but no it's um okay so so you can put your hand through it is it stings when you try to waft it in because it's just air and lightning and you kind of waft you, your fingers kind of go through the cloud as you try to like oh, i was i was like moving my hand going. in front of it like trying to like like oh, you would like have a pool to like a, a swimming pool yeah sort of thing yeah okay um it doesn't really work um you it just kind of disperses the thunderhead a little bit. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't like come towards you the way you want it to. Well, fine, be that way. Um. So, Haru, what are you doing with the book that um, Harland pointed out to you? I'm the uh, um, kind of while still absentmindedly scratching if I can, like start looking at the book and like trying to see sure. what it is. Yeah. Um, so you see in the, uh, on the page that was open, um, there was some sort of sketch, rather there's a caption mm -hmm. and the letters are sort of, um, uh, the letters are sort of, uh, um, 
they're they're formatted in such a way that there would be a drawing right there. Like it's sort of that I don't know. It's justified around a picture, mm -hmm. um, but it's not there anymore. That's a weird thought. It's not there. There's no drawing there. Um, and but your head continuing to think that like the fire weasel came out of a book and the thunderclap might have come out of a book and you're seeing this empty space. Yeah. One assumes your brain goes to, oh god, what got out of this? Yeah. Um, and maybe the hand. It, you see, and it talks about a, um, it talks about a gargoyle's gauntlet, yeah. um, some sort of magic item that could be used, um, and there looks like there might have been some sort of clawed stone hand. It describes it um, in the book, but. There's no drawing. Beza. What? Oh, go ahead. When you were yeah. born, was there a book that you stepped out of and then there's a missing page? Because I may have figured out what happened. No. There was this, like, workshop place. Then I and did not figure out what happened. <laughs> yeah. Now, my, my creator's part of the metronomes, so I was in his workshop, and, uh, and yeah, and now I'm here. Because I wasn't supposed to be born, I was supposed to be activated. Hmm. The hand came out of here! See? Look! It talks about the hand! And she flips it over and, like, shows it off. To everybody, like, show, like shows the... Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, you see that there's a... There's... A blank space where this hand probably could have been, um, at least shape wise. Um, um, but yeah. Bring it back. I kind of want to see what else we can let out or find. What if there's. What if there's. What if it's lonely? What if he's lonely? We could get him a whole family. You, by you himself. went completely blank. You got <laughs> so excited. Or <laughs> hit hear a hypersonic level and none of us could hear it. <laughs> she got so excited. <laughs> What if he's lonely? We can open up books and give him family. And then he's not by himself in here, all by him lonesome. Because he can't talk to a thundercloud and he can't talk to a hand. You'll just hear. Maybe instead of getting stuff out, we should put stuff back in. Hey, 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 Glovey. Glovey. Yeah, little, little fella. You come on, come on, come on back. Come on, we're going. Mm. With what ears do you think it will hear you? That was the lame, question. not me being... The, the heart <laughs> knows. The heart we know. knows. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I've established them well. Um, <laughs> did you come out of a book? I'm not going to put you back in it. I just want to know if that's where you came from. Who are you talking to? <laughs> the fire weasel. Okay. Because <laughs> I had a real good answer from Zvalin. Um, no, it's... Um, <laughs> the, the fire weasel says... Like... I don't want to and... put you back in. I just want... I wanted to know if that's where you came from. That's all. I don't... It's okay. You, I am safe. I am not going to hurt you. Give me a... Give me a percentile. Oh god. Oh lordy. Okay. Fifty-four. Okay, you just you hear the Um But the uh the fire weasel does sort of scurry in a circle in the book that it's burrowed into. <laughs> just kinda of like yeah, kind of looks like it's cradling the zucchini, <laughs> like the piece that it still has. It's, it's all yours, buddy. It's all yours. You get to keep it. I'm not going to take it away. It's all yours. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's it, it has not given you much information as far as that is concerned. Um, so Paro, you you still uh, Harland, your how long does that ten um, minutes? Ten minutes. So Paru picks up this book and Paru's talking about the glove being missing, but you don't see any of that because the book she's holding is just like spewing 
magical energy. Just like, it's like a fog machine. <laughs> um, and she's moving it around. She's like, <laughs> um, it's very pretty. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that book is, um, leeching something. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure that, that this is, is beneficial to our health, staying in close proximity to this tome. It's, uh, if there's something coming out of it, there's lots, there's, like, all right, you know, like when you, when you, you when you pour water on a campfire, it's still going, and it gets, like, all that, like, <laughs> And, and all that smoke yeah, all that smoke and all that ash that comes up it's like it's like doing that but all over everything and it's glowing like right I want here? whatever might... you took and, and she taps oh, we the might paper need to get Harlan to see like the nurse or something do you think it was the drink <gasps> I mean oh that's why you were courageous he didn't uh Par, do you look at the book at all? Yeah, other I, than I, that page, I turn it over to look at the the title of the book. I like start tapping and poking at it, and I'm going to start flipping through pages just to see what happens. Sure, because um, my curiosity has no bounds. Of course, I mean, you spearheaded this whole trek into the restricted section. I'm not surprised, uh, and I appreciate it. Um, so, uh, so you look at the cover of the book. And it is covered in, um, it's leather, but beautifully ornate. Um, almost like a, it, it's been carved. Like this is, this is beautifully crafted, this book. Um, it looks and it, it has been stained and painted to appear as though um, like vining is growing from the leather in the cover. Um, it's really gorgeous. If if any of you have any sort of appreciation for leatherworking or book binding, it is unbelievably impressive. The 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 craftsmanship that went into this book. Um, it is fairly thick. It's like maybe that thick, and probably about like this big. So it's like two handable. Um, and uh, it doesn't have, it has lettering in sort of really beautiful uh, gold filigree on the cover. Um, what languages do you speak, Paru? Uh, Paru speaks common, druidic, goblin, and vegepygmy. <clears throat> um... You don't recognize this, rather, yeah, you can't read it. Um, it's this beautiful sort of calligraphy uh, that also feels, um, it almost kind of just feels like smoke wisp. It's very delicate and very um, both intentional in the way that it's written, but also almost like there's an there's clearly an art to being able to to write this language. Um, but yeah, you, you don't know what it says. Look at that. Part. Yeah. What sure. does it say? Yeah. What, uh, what languages do you speak? Um, or read, abyssal, I guess. Yeah. Abyssal, celestial, common, and infernal. Uh, y you cannot read this, but give me an intelligence check. Okay. Just like straight intelligence. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, 16. 16? Kind of looks like Elvish, but like, but like archaic. It doesn't like, it, it's more than Elvish. There's like little bits of it here and there in the script that you're like, oh, I, I kind of recognize that. Like, it's like seeing a, um, it's like seeing a, a, language that's written in like a Cyrillic alphabet, but you like you don't know which one. It's just in a very similar script. So so yeah, it's it's some variant of Elvish. Yes, Harlan. Mm. Uh, would um I don't know, just with uh Furbolg Society being like mm -hmm. fey adjacent, uh sure. would um 
Harland recognize any and, and like recognize the script as like, oh, I've I've seen that type of stuff before potentially. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you you'd recognize it. Um, it's uh, it, it'd be something that like the elder Fay would write. It's it's um, what's the likelihood of Harlan remembering <laughs> what it's called? <laughs> That's what the die will determine. Sure, give me a <laughs> give me a give me a history check. History. Oh, I'm. Add me an elder fay handbook. Mm -hmm. So, what was the DC? Because I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> you know enough to be like, oh, that's something that old fay can speak, or like old elves. That's old elvish. I think I saw that in. Old man McGillicuddy's house one time. It was, I think, it was on a on a, on a pillar. Um, it's crochets cross stitched on a pillow. <laughs> I know what my next cross stitch problem <laughs> project is now. Um. Uh, hmm. So weird, though, Paru, that the front of the book was something you couldn't read, but you could read inside the book. I'm going to flip open the cover just to mm -hmm. see if it says anything that I can recognize on the inside. Yeah, it can. Um, it says, um, it says, uh, Tome of Fables. Oh, oh, you were talking about these earlier. It's, a, oh, it's, a, yeah. it's about fables. And she's going to start flipping through because she's like, I want well, to read know. it out loud so I can take notes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I will read it out loud. Sure. And she just plops herself down and like gives a little scritch on the the um, fire weasel's head while she flips open oh. to the first page. <laughs> Very good. Um, so Paro is reading this out loud. What do the rest of you do while she's doing that? Do you sit down and listen? Do you just kind of like continue perusing the books, or what do you what do you do? Ace is going to sit down next to Paro and listen. Paro is not particularly, oh. she is only three, so she's not particularly good at reading, but she <laughs> can kind of do it. I think Aliette is uh, kind of crouched down nearby, but is reading over her shoulder, knowing that uh, I can read <laughs> oh, a lot faster. She'd be like, <laughs> you're reading ahead? <laughs> so when I'm like trying to struggle with something, I can't that. wait! I adore I can't that. can't wait. Um, okay. What's this um, one? That, so... I don't know that word. What's that one? <laughs> Imbominable. Bombadable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bombardier. Yep. Yep. Um, so, uh, so uh, Valaine is sort of like whatever the library equivalent of kicking rocks is. It's just kind of like meandering around, pretending like they're not listening, but they're listening. Um, kind of like looking at books, but also like clearly got their attention to to the story being read. Um, and so, so Paru, you're reading through this book, and it it talks about um, it talks about the concept of um, different realms of being. It talks about this idea of the realm of imagination. It's very it's very flowery, very purpley. Um, uh, Aliad has to help a little bit because it's like they used a four syllable word when they could have used a two, mm -hmm. um, and. But there is a section where it starts telling stories and it talks about this um, this grand tower where uh, a great queensdom uh, is housed. Um, it talks about the queens. Um, they were the uh, the spouses of a of a great king of Fey and his uh, greed and uh, ineptitude uh, resulted in the queens deciding that they, um, as a group, could run the kingdom better than the king of the Fae, and they staged a coup. Um, they took over, and uh, that the queensdom was a, a prosperous uh, society from then on under the tutelage of the, of the six queens. Um, that sounds you... like a fun place to go. Uh, you see a story about a wild, um, a wild beast that is uh, given claim to a castle uh, and uh, proceeds to 
allow all the other uh, wild creatures from its forest to also live in the castle, and it starts, the forest starts taking the castle back. Um, and so you're reading all these really interesting little stories, and um, they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're fairy tales you haven't heard before. They're, they're new, they're, they're intriguing, because they're, they're, they're not the stuff, I mean, Chronogram 4 does not have much by way of, like, a verbal culture of, like, passing down stories. Um, there's some music, but it's mostly very, like, esoteric and academic. Um, it's more about the math rather than, like, any expression. Um, some of you do have a little bit of an artistic bent to you. You've, like, Paru and Harland, you're not from, like the dense cityscape you definitely have had like you've heard folk music you've heard folk tales and stuff um but these are new and paru as you're reading through you you get to a section about a uh the littlest dragon and you kind of scritch the scritch the fire weasel as you're reading it and it talks about like and um, and the littlest dragon was lost from its family um, until it was found by a fair princess who who brought him back home uh, and and taught him how to fly. And the four children sitting in the library together reading the book were to say that this and everything goes black for all of you. Oh, shit. And you feel a sense a sensation of falling there's that like you go to sleep and you have that dream that you're like falling backwards um and when you each have that feeling of falling backwards you hit dirt um and everything is very very bright and it takes a moment for your eyes to adjust and there is grass underneath you and there are birds singing in the library. And why was there grass on the ground of the library? And it's way warmer than it was before. Didn't, didn't Valaine say it was climate controlled and you, it takes a minute for each of you to kind of get your bearings and you are not in the library anymore. You are in a, absolutely idyllic little glen um in like the middle of a forest i look around for the little guy i was scratching like oh god did we leave him is he alone he is uh you do not see the fire weasel is this is one of those uh, opportunities uh, it is an opportunity yes this is definitely an opportunity yeah, an opportunity to get expelled. What did you do? Where are we? I have no idea. I was just reading the book. Are all four of us there, or is Valaine there with us as well? Is you hear a us? groan <laughs> from up a tree. <laughs> uh, Ow. Mm. Sorry? What do you? Mm. And, and you see Valaine uh, slowly climb slash stumble out of the tree uh, onto the ground and uh, they look very confused. Um. I got you what? out of I, I got you out of your day or three of um class? <laughs> Um, what? I have no idea Clearly where we are. Is part of the test? Maybe, maybe, maybe we have to be clever enough to find our way back. Sure. Let's go with that. I have no idea what's happening. M Miss Janet? <laughs> Hi there. No. <laughs> uh, and no, you don't, you don't hear right? anything. What, what was that? At least it's pretty, right? Oh, it's gorgeous. It is. It is very pretty. Um, the are sun there is any shining. Structures. Buildings? The woods are too thick. You can't see anything outside of this clearing. But the but the grass is is long and lush. It's it's weird. The grass is like a mix of green and magenta. It's like there's patches of like beautiful purple 
like running through. There's there's interesting colors going on here that are not necessarily what you've seen locally. This is the best grass ever. Are you still in the grass, Pyro? <laughs> no, yeah, she's flopped backwards. Like, this Pyro, is the you best. roll around. You roll around in the grass, and it feels like getting a hug. It's really comfortable. Um, it's super soft. That, like the, the the book she's is not holding the book anymore. No, the book is nowhere. Oh, should, should one of us climb a tree and, and take a look? I already around? tried that. It kind of hurt. Oh, right. Were you trying to climb or did you land in it? Don't be smart with me, short stack. Sorry. Um, but uh, Valenda's sort of like gesture. Yeah, go ahead. All right, Beza, go yeah. for it. <laughs> Beza goes, oh, yeah, your turn. <laughs> and Frankie's um, passing it over. <laughs> all right, I'll give it a shot. And she goes over to a tree and starts trying to climb up. Um, okay, so you start heading up uh, the tree, and it is slow going. Um, there's not a lot of hand holdable spots uh but you're able to kind of like dig your hands in a little bit and and find some larger branches and, and climb your way up um when you get to the canopy on the tree it's a little precarious for you to <laughs> to be on the higher branches there's a density thing with stone and bronze and clockwork um but you are able to kind of like brush a couple of, of branches out of the way and, and peek out. Um, you are first hit with a tremendously warm, bright sun. Uh, it is, um, it's like a little off noon, but still very much high in the sky. And, uh, and you are just like, oof, it takes a second for you to look. And um, once your eyes adjust a bit and you look out, you see just forest as far as you can see huge trees things that are taller than what you're currently in just towering over with like vining and moss just kind of hanging down them they're like the size of buildings uh these massive trees and uh in the very far distance past the trees um you do see like kind of a mountain range um in some really interesting shapes. They're kind of very, like, isosceles. <laughs> They're very tall and spiky. Um, and uh, near one of those really tall um, mountains, you also see something that maybe looks like a structure. It's not the same shape as the mountains. It's also very tall, though. Um. So, guys... I've got good news and bad news. Well, the good news is everything's really pretty for the whole way I can see. That is good news. Yep. It looks really beautiful, like storybook beautiful. Um, the bad news is that I think we're going to have to go on a quest to find anything, because the only thing that looks like a building... He's way over that way. Like, through the entire forest that way. <laughs> Leads to trouble. I mean... I'm with her. Secondary good thing, you don't have to eat any more protein A in block B. I'm with her. <laughs> There's got to be something edible around here for you guys, right? It's boring. I mean, where's I'm sure I can rough something up. Still have protein B in my pocket. I'm more inclined to eat the thing that I saw where it came from rather than the thing that I don't know where this is. 
So was that it? Was that a yes on the protein, or was that a no on the protein? I, I, I don't not, know. I not, it, okay. I just eat crimes lead to adventure. That's all. That's all I learned. Well, I mean, we gotta head that direction. Crime adventure is away. Um, I just we don't have any instructions for this, like. There's, there's no adults out here. We're, we're, this is not, I feel like this is wrong. Maybe the book of little girl thought for a moment whether or not it would have been a mistake to have come here in the first place, but it seems that her friends had enough wherewithal and courage to perhaps get them through. Oldiet, you're the only one who hears that. Did you hear that? What? Hear what? Yeah, we gotta go that way. The person, no, they, they were talking. I think it's the instructions. I think. You hear this the Baba weird... Yaga too? Are you? Are... Is this what Gab Gaba Yaga? Is that you? Oh, but that would have been nonsense to think that. And so the little bookish girl struck down that idea fairly quickly. I'm. I'm. Uh, I think I might need to lay down. Okay, I need to lay down. The grass is really, really soft. Like, it's super soft. Just defeated. Just lay in the grass. I have no idea what to do. Um, uh... <laughs> Valaine is like, you, you alright, Sunshine? You really don't hear that? No. Like there's voices telling you to do stuff or I mean I feel like like uh, no not exactly it's like it, it's like it's n narrating but that doesn't make any sense the little bookish girl couldn't help but think that the <laughs> roguish the roguish uh, changeling had really dashing <laughs> hair <laughs> no 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 shush, 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 shush. no uh uh, oh, I'm sorry, is that not the kind of book I'm telling? Not with everybody here? Oh my gosh. My um, wait a minute. You can hear me? <laughs> Unfortunately. So, okay, who who are you? Where? What is this? Where are we? Dear, I'm the narrator. Of what? And you're in the book. So I tell your story. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not how this works. Valaine's like, that's a lot of no's for nobody talking to her. Is she okay? Is she having more of those aneurysms? I don't know. I hope not. Maybe, maybe. Am I having a brain aneurysm? Is that why? What does what this is? I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure a different book would have that answer. Oh, okay. Uh, so. It's fine that this sounds completely unhinged, but uh, I think we're in that book you were reading, Haru. It's it's talking to me. I can hear it. The book is talking to you. How books don't have mouths, Olia? Did you hit your head when you landed? Maybe. Wait, no, it makes sense to me. That book was magic as shit. <laughs> <laughs> it makes as much sense as anything else we've seen around here. Mm-hmm. The little bookish girl had a no good, very bad, absolutely correct idea. Oh my goodness. Um, I Are guess. Nice? Is it nice? Not really. <laughs> can Can you ask it where we're supposed to go? Like what? what I mean, what we're supposed to do now that we're here? The little bookish girl is wondering where we're supposed to go. <laughs> the little bookish girl might want to move slightly to the left. 
Uh, and I'll just you take a step. you take a step to the left, and a rumble comes from the forest line outside the meadow, and a gigantic. It's really hard to tell the shape of it, but it is muscle and fur and teeth just barrels into the uh, into the the meadow space. Your left was right where uh, Valaine was standing. The other three are on the right, and this creature just barrels right through the middle of you. Um, you feel a hand grab your shoulder and pull you back out of the way because you went one step left. You probably should have made three steps left. Um, and you are uh, split down the middle by this massive beast. And the trotting and the snarling gets louder. And another one passes. And another one passes. And there's like a herd of these massive creatures running through the middle of you. It takes an inordinate amount of time for this. It's like a train. It takes so long for these things, but they don't seem to be noticing you. They're just one track. And you, Oliet, sort of hear talking, but it's very much drowned out by the sounds of these beasts. Um, there's a bit of like... Um, wondering where their friends are. and so there's just like little spurts of it and it's very oh, hard to hear i'm um, missing the important stuff and you hear and the ground and scream and you're like what um and you as this barreling uh herd pushes through the meadow you feel the ground shaking on their like under their weight and then you feel the ground shake and underneath Ooh. you and um and it opens uh as you feel for the second time in a very short succession the sensation of falling that is where we're going to end for today do all oh. of us feel that sensation or just Oliet? Oliet and Valaine. oh no <laughs> let's say what? The other three of you do not hear this, and you are on the other side of this stampede. Oh my As gosh. Says, to be continued. Oh my gosh. That's what we got. So that is the end of part one of however many parts we do. <laughs> uh, let's call it chapter. End of chapter one. Sounds good. Uh, Prologue. So that's that's what I got for y'all. <laughs> yeah, we need to do some. Uh, we gotta do some giveaways. Yes. How we dare? Do. How I dare? dare. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I very much hope that everybody was enjoying this. Uh, I am so excited. Everyone is delightful. Oh my god! And you'd have no idea how much I wanted the fire lizard thing weasel to be in the book, but can't it's fine we'll deal with it later um, okay. i'll find other cute it's things okay. as a it's okay. um cute terrible things you you um, know where paru's heart truly yeah. lies yes 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 we know we know <laughs> mushroom dance <laughs> Whatever. the has lived the life of sin mm -hmm. um so <laughs> Um, all right, so that is that is the story for, for today, um, and we are going to be rewarding you fine people who have hung out with us uh, with a, a giveaway. Let me set up our, uh, our giveaway here real quick. Um, I just want to make sure I got it all put, uh, put together. Um, but anyway, we will be here same time next week. Um, Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. I remembered this time. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I am very, very excited uh, to continue our story. Um, oh. Where is the giveaway? I'm looking for Streamlabs giveaway thing. Raffle. I am, I, my heart, Pygmy has already posted fan art on Twitter and my heart oh, no. is so full right now. Oh, no. oh, what? I'm so excited I'm by so this. Pigs, you're amazing. Can I just say that? Um, runs to twitter to check right um okay so i am going to add a uh diehard dice 
Uh, $50. I should have done this earlier. Sorry, everyone. Please stay right. tuned. Please continue talking amongst yourselves while I do this. Um, uh, Right now. So, we're so we are we're doing like... three of these, I believe, tonight. So yep. it'll be uh, it'll be a, it's a good night for for people who are in, enjoying the Die Hard Dice and, and the lovely folks there. Yes. So uh, we are going to okay. So the following rules are: uh, you have to be a follower on the channel to be eligible. Thank you so much for watching us. So if you would like to give us a follow, if you haven't already, um, that is how you're eligible. Um, we will, um, we will be running this, oh, surprise, okay, uh, $50 die hard dice, uh, gift card, um, add, and let me see if we can do this. All right, so, uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, followers can volunteer for this. We would ask that if you're, um, do we want to just do for everyone? Everyone in here, it's, it's a I think, premiere. I, yeah, we can yeah. do everyone. We can do everyone. Okay. Um, we, we normally have, uh, we ask for honor system and have our creators not be eligible for them, but it'll be nice today. Um, we will also do three next week. So if you want to come join us for the next episode, uh, we will also be giving away Die Hard Dice so you'll have another chance. Yes. Um, so uh, we are going to be starting our giveaway... Um, I don't know how to do this. So everybody just put exclamation point raffle to enter. Yes. Yes, please. Um, so you put exclamation point raffle into the chat and you will be entered into our, our, our raffle. And we'll do this yes. three times to, uh, uh, to get ourselves some winners. Um, so you'll get a $50 gift card for Die Hard Dice. It's good for anything on their website. So that's dice, dice accessories. That includes the pla uh, the polymer and the metal dice. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you, $50 towards a metal set of dice, you can get a really nice yes, set yes. for that. Um, so please, please, please uh, come join us. We have one person who has entered so far. <laughs> um, Two people. While we're, waiting, while we're waiting for people to uh, to join the raffle... Um, just a really quick recap of, um, our sponsors, uh, because they're absolutely amazing. Um, we are really, really proud to be sponsored this season by Eldritch Foundry. Um, again, that's where all of our character art came from, and they're very kind enough, uh, to have let us use those, and we will hopefully have some really cool, um, features and, uh, and giveaways that we can use with Eldritch Foundry coming up, uh, during the season. Um, and... We will have uh, some fun marketing stuff. I'm very excited about using our um, our uh, character art. Um, and I highly recommend you go check them out, if only because not only can you design printable minis from Eldritch Foundry, but you can also get digital tokens with your characters that you've created, including top-downs. So you've designed your custom character and you can have top-down tokens to use in maps, which is super cool. Um, so please check them out. Um, our next sponsor, obviously, you know, based on our giveaway, is um, Die Hard Dice. Uh, again, exclamation point raffle if you want to be in the raffle. Um, and they are really long time, we are long time fans of Die Hard Dice. They are an incredible company that is so generous with their time and with their products. Uh, we cannot wait to continue working with them. We've got some very cool things coming down the pike with them as well. Um, and finally, World Anvil, who we absolutely adore. Um, we've been using them a lot lately with some um, some world building with not just our Nerdsmith shows, but also just at, personally. I've been using it a ton for a lot of different um, text role plays that I've been mm -hmm. part of. So it's really, really handy. They have some really cool features, and we're going to try to highlight those every week. Um, so you get a little bit of information about what new features are around. The biggest thing for me right now is that they just updated all of their table functionality. You can now create a custom table in your world anvil that you can sort rent and you can randomly select from. So you can make like treasure tables and stuff now that can pull and you can search the tables as well. It is very, very cool. It's super awesome that they upgraded their tables. There's a lot of other features they're going to be upgrading, but, um, but I was super excited about that. Um, we are in the world of Vale in this game, but we are in a different continent that we're making from scratch. Um, but I will be playing with our Pantheon, which our Pantheon is one of my absolute prides and joys. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the new Mine table too. features, I will be making it even more possible to read it without having to scroll through 50 pages of Pantheon information. So 
look, looking forward to that. Um, we've got about a minute and a half left in our raffle uh, before it closes, so please, please enter. Uh, if you would like to be um, entered in for a $50 give, uh, gift card, um, and uh, we will be uh, we will be happy to give you dice money <laughs> for your terrible terrible habit. Tessa can attest. It's it is insatiable. The best habit. It is not <laughs> terrible. I do not know what you were referring to. It is an amazing amazing habit, mm -hmm. and I adore it. I have That's four dangerous. sets of die hard dice just like on the desk with me right now <laughs> same oh i was gonna say here i've got a set um if you want to see they come in some of them come in really pretty metal uh cases but mm -hmm. this is the battle war gold set um it's really super pretty it's got like really gorgeous edges i'm a huge fan of the fact that the design that die hard does they cut the edges off so the caltrops aren't caltrops they're not gonna kill you um <laughs> they're wonderful um but yeah so we we all have we all have really beautiful the clack nath rocks yes i um, too want the, the dragon ones they're so pretty i've got yeah, a really set good. here i've got a couple of their polymer sets which i uh, really adore um, all right we got 10 seconds 10 seconds left if you haven't come in verdant exclamation point raffle the go, delay go, go. probably doesn't make anyone eligible by this point no. <laughs> those are pretty yeah those are gorgeous those are awesome mm -hmm. all right everybody the raffle is closed. We are going to pick our winners. Um, and we're I will pick... reach out to you um, yes. uh, from the We Are Nerdsmith uh, account to get yes. information. You're all on you. Twitch. So yeah, keep an eye out on your Twitch account. Yeah. Um, rule as well, based on some limitations of our raffle, you get one today. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is eligible for one. If you win and we roll you again, we're going to go to another person. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. We got one, two, three. We got Gen, Gen, Gen 37. You won. Hooray. Congratulations. Uh, that's Congrats. so exciting. We, uh, we will be in touch with you with your gift card. Huzzah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if I can pick another one. Anonymous. Nice. Mouse. You oh, won. Yay. Mouse is a longtime viewer of our yes. Friday night karaoke streams and a friend of mine. And I'm so happy that she is going to get some pretty, pretty dice. Um, and then our last winner for this evening is, oh, wait, hold on. Got one more. Sorry. <laughs> let me, let me do that. Hold on. I messed it up. Oh no. <laughs> All right, everyone. There's one more chance. One more chance. Oh. Really quick. Enter the raffle again because I'm terrible. There's a there's gonna be tech problems every time. So if you haven't won yet, enter into the raffle. Um, please please do so. I promise. <laughs> I'll try to. Uh, yeah, that was terrible. That was the worst. I'm so bad at this. It'll be better next time. I promise. I hit a back button when I should have hit the oh, pick winner no. button. It's fine. It's Whoops. fine. But um, I will close I entry. And can, so we hit five. I think that's everybody. So yeah, yeah, I don't yeah know. that's everybody because the other two won already. Okay, so I'm gonna close entries. Some of us are on stream and not eligible to win. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, um, how can I whisper from the OBS account? I don't know that I can. I don't know either. Um, all right, well we're gonna call it. Um, if you're not a follower, you should follow and then do the raffle. Um, but uh, we will do raffles next time. So I'm gonna close the entries. And we're going to pick our last winner for tonight. Drum roll. Pygmy! Pygmy one dice! Pygmy, uh, thank you so much. We are very, very grateful. Um, oh, no, and... Carl. I'm so sorry. No, Carl, you will be oh, eligible next Carl. time, Carl. We yeah, promise. Next week. Three more next week. Uh, Yes, we have three more giveaways next week, so please, please join us for the continuation of our story. Um, we will have uh, uh, we'll have part of our story of what will happen, and we will see what becomes of our delightful heroes. So, everyone, please take care of yourselves. We will see you next week, or if you want to come hang out on Friday, same time. Uh, we sing karaoke, so please come hang out. Um, everyone i don't have a sign off yet so i'm just gonna do my normal one uh please uh have a wonderful week make good choices stay safe and uh by all means please do me a favor and be good to each other so 
So we'll see you later. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Yes, go vote. Bye, yes, go everybody. vote. Go vote. Yeah, definitely oh. do that.